in the event. I hear AJ in the background. There's Susanna as well. And it looks like we're live. Let's oh see God. if anybody's joining us. Hopefully, touch wood, nothing happened majorly. I'm not seeing any. There we go. People are joining. So please say hello in the I chat. Guess. And there we go. Oh, Take it away. There we go. I see Lori. Is it just Lori so far? Okay. Oh, there they come. Anne. Hi, Anne. Hi. Look at all the. I'm going to put my glasses on to say hello to people. Uh, Vi from New York, Rochelle from Connecticut, another AJ, yay, Tamara from LA, Lindsay, oh my God, see now once they join, it's a Diane, Jennifer, Deborah, April, Teresa, Pam, I wish I could say hi to everybody, but it's going so fast, Kim, Carrie, Mira, wow, you guys, when you also say where you're from, it's great because you believe it or not, in these webinars, We've connected people like that have become friends forever, just live three blocks away. It's incredible. Well, thanks so much for being here and for spending part of your Saturday morning or afternoon, depending on where you live with me. I also have a special guest you're going to meet in a second. Her name is Susanna. So I love doing this webinar. Yesterday was my 64th birthday. And I just I, I wanted to go live yesterday and, and do this. But, you know, there was plans and things like that. So we're doing it today. Probably a better day for people. And many of you maybe are familiar with me from the Truth About Weight Loss Summit which I co-produce with Toby from Better Life Summits. And he's here managing all the technical aspects of the webinar. And he'll be the one asking us your questions towards the end. If you're able to stay all the way to the end, we're happy to answer them. So we've been doing the Truth About Weight Loss Summit since 2019. So this was our sixth year. And this year it was 13 days instead of nine days. And during the nine days of the free summit, I do 45 interviews, most of them medical doctors, all of them knowledgeable about weight loss, food addiction, health, and then this year we did a special thing where we had four of your favorite speakers, Dr. John McDougall, Dr. Alan Goldhammer, Dr. Doug Lyle, and Dr. Joel Furman come on for a special session where many of them did PowerPoint presentations and took your questions live because we noticed that as much as people enjoy the pre-recorded interviews, they love the ability to interact live and ask get questions, which you're going to be able to do today after we give you some value and some content, which is what we always want to do. So I don't want to tell you my whole story because it's I've, I've told it on probably 50 podcasts, which you can find on my uh, website. You can go to my YouTube channel and there's a talk that I gave at the McDougal Advanced Study Weekend called From Fat Vegan to Skinny Bitch, where I tell my weight loss story. And of course, I wrote a book about it called The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. But very briefly, 12 years ago today, I weighed more than 50 pounds than I weighed now. I went to the True North Health Center as a patient. I learned what I call the secrets to ultimate weight loss. And it's been my passion and my pleasure and my privilege to, to share that information with as many interested people as I can over the last 12 years. But many people that meet me now meet, see a slender person. It's like, well, what could she possibly know about weight loss or food addiction? You know, clearly I haven't suffered. Well, you can't really judge somebody how they look now by their whole life, because clearly I did suffer. If you read my book, it was terrible. I was not only the health problems, but just being in a body that was up to 80 or 90 pounds more than they weigh now. It was very difficult. I was the only fat kid in my class until pretty much college in 1960. There was not very many overweight or obese children except for me. And if you look at my school pictures up until college, I, there was one that was larger and that was me. And so the reason I'm saying that is because I want you to know that no matter how long or how deeply you've suffered or how much weight you think you have to lose, there's hope. I've had clients in their 90s that lost weight. And the person I'm going to share with you today who's going to tell her story, because her, her weight loss journey is, is still a little bit in progress. I mean, I think she's fine, but you know how us ladies are. We always want to be a little slimmer. They always say you can't be too rich or too thin. Don't know about that. But it seems that no matter how slim somebody is, they always seem to want to lose a few more pounds. But she didn't start her journey until her early 50s or mid 50s. She is just a regular person. She's not a YouTuber. She's not a blogger. She's a mom of eight children. And she really believes she was actually on the last Truth About Weight Loss Summit. And she believes that if she can do it, you can do it too. And so I'd like to introduce Susanna. Are you there? I see you small. How do, we, small. how do I make myself big? Well, how do we make you big? Because I'm so big and you're there. We go. Okay, good. Perfect. And so Susanna, you know, I love your story because you, you know, you, you're, I mean, and not that you're shy per se, but you're not somebody that was seeking the limelight. Like you, I don't think you ever thought like, Hey, one day I'm going to be on YouTube and tell my story, but that your story is so significant because you are what I call a regular person. You're not somebody that was looking to, you know, make money in the weight loss space, write a book or even be a coach. But I think your story resonates with a lot of people because one, you didn't do it until you were in your fifties. 
Yeah, I was, uh, I was obese for over 25 years. Um, I was a, a pretty healthy, happy little kid. Um, I didn't suffer some of the same things that you did. Uh, but, but yeah, once I started having my kids, I was just like, I kept piling on the weight with, with each baby. Um, after three kids, I did actually get all the way back down to my ideal weight for about a minute and, and, uh, then got pregnant again and off to the races. So, yeah, you know, what, what I love about your story too, and I feel so uh, blessed that, you know, that I kind of was the gateway to you becoming so successful, not just in your health, but in your weight loss journey is that you actually just were a regular old participant, somebody who watched the truth about weight loss summit, you know, for free, I believe it was 2021, three That's years right. ago. Uh, I'm so happy. How did you even find the summit? You know, I think it must have just been from from linking from a different website or something and and watch watch this free summit and I I thought okay I'll I'll give it a chance and during that summit I know I just I I took a whole book of notes I'm a note taker and and I had never heard any of this information before and and it's funny because I remember now my husband saying to me why are you writing everything down <laughs> but I actually was I was like I can't lose this it sounds like it sounds like the solution and it turns out it was that is fantastic. What do you remember most about that first summit? Were there particular speakers that resonated with you or particular topics that gave that? Because you, you did something really interesting that a lot of people don't do is that you continued to learn. Like a lot of people like feel like weight loss is one and done. And I don't know very many things in life. Like I've been studying improvisational stand-up comedy for 40 years and I'm still, I'm okay. I'm not, I'm not great. You don't see me on TV, but I never give up. And so many people I feel do one thing. They take one program, they want read one book. And if they can have success doing that, that is fantastic. I would love to hear from you. And maybe there were a few out there, but you, as, as you continue to progress, you, you, you know, people would say, but you've already lost over 70 pounds. Why are you taking this course again with AJ? And I've noticed that in the people that have been super successful, like the Tammy Kramers, the Shada Soleimani's, they continue to stay in the learning process. Yes. For sure. I, I mean, that that has been absolute key for me is is to find uh, ways to continue learning. And I'm still doing it. I, I feel like I'm still learning. I, I, I'll, I'll be in a chat and I'll be like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so I, I find that very exciting. And it's I guess it's become almost a hobby for me now, like like learning about this stuff and it peeling off the layers and going deeper and deeper and understanding which all of this learning helps me understand myself and my own motivations of why I'm eating why I was eating foods that weren't health promoting yeah did you want to I, mean, I can talk to you forever because you, I love your story and there's questions I also want to ask you did you want to share a few slides because sure. you know I think people sometimes need to see the visual proof that you know we, we, we were a lot heavier than that's that. right yeah, for sure. I put together a little presentation, so I'll just share it here. Um, and can you let me know if it's up, AJ? I don't see it yet. Okay. Um, oh, start. I didn't click start. Oh, that's why. There we go. There we go. Um, so yeah, this this really uh, resonates with me. Don't be afraid to start over. This time you're not starting from scratch. You're starting from experience. And I tell you, you know, in this last three years or so, I've had to start over and over again. Um, you know, where I've I've um, made some not good choices in my food and got right back on. You know, the very next meal was vegetables. I've tried every diet under the sun. This is just a few that I can remember. Weight Watchers, Paleo, Jenny Craig, Susan Powder, Body for Life, Covert Bailey, Trim Healthy Mama, and this 36-hour eat and then don't eat for 36 hours and on back and forth, not, not medically supervised fasting. Um, this Your book that was one of the first things that I did after that first summit that I watched. Um, I, I got your book so that I could uh, dive deeper in understanding. And yeah, so here's some of my before and afters. This is this is me as a kid. Uh, and as a teen, I was healthy. I was athletic. Um, this is at my wedding. And right after... 
a year after we got married, my husband got testicular cancer and uh, that was like super stressful. And so we really had, if we were going to have a family, it had to be now. And uh, so I gained over 50 pounds with that pregnancy. And uh, other than that one time where I was said with, after my third child, I got back to my ideal weight. I continued to pack it on after that. This is my sixth baby. And this is way after having all the kids. Um, in uh, in 2015 and 2016, I had some um, medical issues. I had a um, I, I fell in a garden and uh, had avulsion fractures in my ankle that had to be surgically put back together with pins. And uh, and then a, a six months later, I had a, a bulging disc in my neck that had to be replaced. And so, as you can see, this is how you get to be. 70 or 80 pounds overweight, um, just just completely sedentary, um, eating whatever I wanted, whatever food I prepared for the kids. I don't come from a history of of healthy eating with my my parents. Just they're they're both struggling with their health now in their 80s. And my mom is obese, and my dad has type two diabetes and prostate cancer and all sorts of medical issues. So um, so. I had to learn this from scratch and and I think that's where that's why I clicked so much with that summit. So the year before the summit I had sort of heard about plant based my husband's uh cholesterol was high and the doctor wanted to put him on statins and so we started looking into the plant based diet and sort of fiddled around with it but you know lots of vegan junk food which is just ubiquitous it's everywhere you can get it anywhere. Um, so I did lose 15 pounds at first weight, but most of my weight came off after the summit and by joining courses such as lose weight with a full plate. And yeah, so you are strong. You are beautiful. You are loved. You are special. You are not weak. You are not defective. You're not weird and you're not a lost cause. Isn't that great? <laughs> so this is the change for me. You can see just this, just a headshot that I picked out because it's they're kind of similar pose. And yeah, this is this is sort of the the big change for me. And uh, I feel so good. I feel, um, you know, I it's so much more than the weight, isn't it? Like I just I feel my my brain is calm and stable. I'm happy. I feel healthy. I feel pretty. <laughs> Um, I love shopping for new clothes now. I, you know, back in the left side, I was kind of pushing out of a, a 18 or a 2X in tops. And now I'm buying a size eight or a medium. And um, that's, that's really thrilling. <laughs> um, so don't be so hard on yourself. Dealing with life, everyday stuff and emotions can be tough. You're a brave soul on a mission. You got this. So this was my mission. And this was my marching orders after starting your courses. I start my day with vegetables. So I go out to my garage fridge and I pull out a schwack of vegetables and I chop it all up. You know, if, if you don't have the time to do this, you can always, um, Use frozen vegetables. You can do stuff the night before, that kind of thing. I throw it all in a pan and I just use um, water to saute it or even a dry pan as long as it's really hot and the stuff doesn't stick. Um, yeah, and then that's all for me. <laughs> so I use um, California balsamic vinegar just to give something a good taste. Um, people use spices um, and herbs and stuff like that. Different day, different bowl of vegetables. I vary the vegetables. I really had trouble at the start. I couldn't eat as much as I'm eating now in the morning. Um, the idea of vegetables kind of turned my stomach. But I, one way that I got around it was uh, that you had suggested was to go with the, the vegetable that you dislike the least. And so for me, that was zucchini. Like I could picture myself having some zucchini in the morning. So that's how I started. Now, if I don't have my vegetables in the morning, if something comes up and we have to dash out, 
I really miss it. I feel like the the greens and the thylakoids that are in the greens really help me to tamp down my cravings in the day. So after that, I load up on starch and that's sort of, this is a starch based diet. And so the satiety from the starches is what kept me going because I don't feel hungry in every other diet I've ever done. You just feel hungry <laughs> and you're thinking about food all the time. So I, at night, um, a couple nights a week, I'll put four parts water and one part oat groats in my slow cooker. And uh, the funny thing I was remembering when we saw this slide is I used to feed my horse oats just like this, um, but it's just the most whole form of oats. It's, it's um, you know, the least processed. And so, yeah, it looks like that in the morning. This batch I had put in cinnamon and apples overnight. It's absolutely delicious. And then I have this huge bowl. I mean, there's just no deprivation here. That's the amazing thing is that I feel nice and full after I eat. And when you're eating low in caloric density, which is something I'm sure we'll talk about in a few minutes, is um, you can eat ad libitum, which means to satiety. And that's just amazing for me. It's a big bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> and I do have that every day. And I sweeten it with. Um, I mash up a banana in there and that's all I need. It's great. So snacks, sometimes in the afternoon I get hungry. These are just a few of the many things. I'll pop some pea pods and some hummus. Uh, I've got some oil-free hash browns here and you have taught us how to make a uh, really simple ketchup, just half tomato paste and half balsamic vinegar. It tastes fantastic. Uh, lots of fruit. This is the um, jam bars that you gave us the recipe with some homemade cherry jam that I just thickened with chia seeds. Uh, these are your lemon blueberry cornmeal muffins that were just in the bundle that you had. They're delicious. So batch cooking is something that I've learned through your courses. Um, that is the key to making dinner is to have stuff batch cooked. When I first learned about batch cooking, I thought, ah, I don't think I'm going to like that because I don't really like leftovers. Um, I like something fresh. I'm, I've learned from um, Dr. Doug Lyle that I'm a novelty seeker, but I can make a dinner in three minutes when I've got batch cooked food ready. So these are the kind of things that I will pre-cook um, for the week and then just store in my fridge. So here's some, a pan of potatoes, some mini peppers, some delicata squash. This is quinoa. This is sweet potato croutons. This is just roast, roasted mixed vegetables and I put balsamic vinegar and rosemary before I cook them. And then up in the top left corner, I took a bulb of garlic and I first wrapped it in some parchment paper and then over top some tin foil um, just to keep the foil off the food. And, um, and then just use that throughout the week as a spread. Uh, rice, I learned very recently from someone in the chat that I can freeze rice. So I've started doing that, super handy. Um, when I'm not too busy, I try to get uh, pinto beans soaked and cooked. It, it, I also keep a selection of uh, unsalted canned beans in my pantry for the nights where I need something really quick. Um, often keep um, a variety of homemade bean burgers in the freezer. They stack up great and you can heat them up real quick. Here's some chickpeas that I did. Yeah, so then dinner can just be something fantastic like this. <laughs> um, and it's thrown together so quickly. I, I love the boxes of greens. Um, and my husband does eat this way. My kids don't. Um, but they're getting better as we go along. It's been a slow process with them. So yeah, this is just one night where I felt fancy. It doesn't have to be fancy. And there's another night, just this is simply a can of beans, a tomato, some cilantro, some garlic over top of some salad with some rice and corn. This is uh, another night. This is um, your um, barefoot dressing, AJ, on top of that. Here's a taco salad. Just made some uh, refried beans just done in water and mashed up and added some garlic and onions, lettuce, 
rice, salsa, and cilantro. Delish. Here's some of the cookbooks that I lean on. Um, these are the ones that have helped me the most. It's, uh, the last two I do have to modify a little bit um, because um, they they don't use oil, but some of them use a little bit of flour. And uh, this is a sofa's free program. So it's um, sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, and salt. So use the 2190 rule. It takes 21 days to create a habit and it takes 90 days to create a lifestyle. I would say that the 21 days is just such a cool thing to um, kind of throw yourself into like an experiment. Can you just commit yourself to 21 days? And that's exactly what I did. That's how I started. So I just found this recently. I didn't know I had a picture of myself with my little AirPod in listening to the summit in 2021. And so it was shortly after that, that I, I was on the go with this. So eating on the run, um, you know, you can get a salad in almost any restaurant and, you know, sometimes I'll have to say, oh, can I have the salad, but no feta cheese or, or whatever other things that you see. And at other times there isn't, if there isn't a salad on the menu, you can often, I'll just actually write a note. And, you know, these days with online recipes are, are uh, sorry, restaurants have their, their menu online. You can easily look through and go, okay, this dish has a potato. This dish has some roasted vegetables. This dish, you know, that sort of thing. And write a little note. And I'm always just very friendly and say, you know, I'm on a very special diet. And I was wondering if you could put me together a plate with the following things and charge me what you think is fair. And I've never been turned down. So I'm getting braver and braver with that. Another thing I do now, I learned this from Pam, one of the success coaches here, is I take potatoes in a little Ziploc bag to a restaurant. That little bottle on the top is my California balsamic vinegar. It also does come in in small travel bottles, or you can just use your own travel bottle for your own dressing. Um, and so once my salad comes, then I, you know, discreetly, everybody else at the table is so interested in what their own meal is. So I'll just, uh, you know, pull it out of my bag and, and just discreetly pop my potatoes onto my plate and, uh, and cut them up and add that to my salad because of course I need the starch, right? Because otherwise I'm not going to have the satiety. So here is a restaurant where I actually did this. This is, this is the potatoes with the salad. And this is at a, my, a, my kids do a bunch of sports. And so my youngest is now 16. And so uh, we're here we are off gone to a volleyball tournament somewhere. Now this one we were driving to. So I took two coolers full of food just for me. This is all my food. And this is another tournament, a local one where I had everything prepped the night before to take with me. Preparation trumps motivation. <laughs> Yeah, here I am eating at a gym. I was away at my son's, um, my older son is in university and I was away watching his volleyball. And this is in a hotel room. Um, this is some of the stuff I brought with me from home. And then that little pink and white device I got for around 30 bucks. I got a, a travel rice cooker off of Amazon and um I can also cook oatmeal in there. So that's cool because then I can just bring a, a Ziploc bag of rice and a Ziploc bag of oatmeal and cook those. And usually you, there's enough room in the hotel fridge if you're in hotels. Here's another day in a hotel. We just cooked broccoli and potatoes in the microwave. It doesn't smell great, but it tastes great. <laughs> and then uh, those boxes of salad, you know, this whatever day this was, I... I didn't have other things prepared for myself, but yet I can go into a grocery store and I can get a box of salad and put an orange on it to make it kind of like a dressing to give it some flavor so that I wasn't just eating dry greens. And this is in an airport. I was able to get pineapple chunks and mixed veggies with ranch dip, <clears throat> excuse me, which just went, the ranch dip went straight into the trash. And it's not cheap, but you know, when you're crossing borders, like, you know, when I fly into the States, I can't bring food across. So this is what was available inside. 
this is on a on a ferry here. I live in British Columbia, Canada, so we're on the ferry, and and here I am having having my oatmeal. And you know, last year I had the opportunity to travel to Prague with my husband, and and you know, actually AJ said to me, "Well, there's grocery stores there, isn't there?" And you know, there was. And look at all the great food I was able to get. It didn't matter that I couldn't read the labels. I can identify produce. And we cooked in our hotel room. It was great. Just in the microwave. Oh, wait, no, this one didn't have a microwave. This one just had the uh, Nespresso coffee maker. So we had to do stuff with hot water. Um, yeah, and this is the dinner we actually made in our in our room, which is great. And then when I go places, I take, I offer to take something that I know I can eat. So I made this little tray up and took it with me. And this is at my son's university graduation. And I brought potatoes because it was going to be four and a half hours long. And I thought, well, if I need it, I, you know, and I did need it, I did get hungry. So I don't want to, I don't want to ever let myself get starving hungry because then I'm going to go for the lowest caloric density thing in my environment, which might be something junky. And so I have to prepare. So I am always chasing dopamine. And I think probably AJ will dive into that a little further later. But, um, you know, just now things like being able to sit out on my deck and have a great salad in the sunshine and just feel that warm sun on my face, just going for walks. Like I wasn't doing this kind of thing. I was stuck inside 72 or so pounds overweight. I was missing. Life was passing me by. And so this is the kind of thing that I can do now. And I didn't do all this at the start. I started slowly. I got, um, I was able to get an e-bike, which is um, an electric bike. Um, it just has pedal assist. I live in a really hilly town. Like this hill on this trail is just near my house. And, um, and so it was so frustrating to get on a bike when I was so big and get all sweaty. Now I don't mind getting sweaty. But back then it was like not going to happen. Uh, this is a hike that my husband and I did up at Whistler. And, you know, we've been going there once a year for 17 years. And this is the first year that I was able, last year was able, the first year I was able to do the hike. This is, there's my bike. We are out in the forest. And yeah, I even ride at sunset. I just stick to the neighborhood roads so it's not busy and caught this beautiful sunset. Like I missed all of this. I missed all my kids' events, and now I just have so much energy. Here we are going out to the farmer's market on our bikes and dancing at my son's wedding. And I know it's a blurry photo, but this one just means so much to me because I had been up since 6.30 in the morning. I This is our first child to have a wedding. My daughter got married during COVID, so there was no wedding. And... Um, you know, I started at 6.30 in the morning. I had all the guys here getting dressed. I made them a big breakfast. We had photos here. Off, you know, getting dressed, getting to the wedding, having the wedding, having the reception on all that entails as the mother of the groom. And this is like at 10 o'clock at night. I mean, I, there's no way I ever would have been out dancing on a dance floor at the weight I was. And you know, the first time I yawned wasn't until in the car on the way home at around 11 or 11.30 at night. It was a great day. This is just at one of my son's rugby games. And, you know, I had eaten in the car and, and it was cooling off. It was a summer night, but it was cooling off. It was just so beautiful. And, and I just, these little moments just really pierce my heart because I can do these things now that like my kids, although they're older, they know their mom is back. And I feel more like I've come back to my core personality of who I am. This is on that same ferry. You know, my husband, when I was showing him this, my slideshow, he said, tell people how you used to you know, need a blanket and stay in the car. And I mean, here it is, it's, it was like a 5 a.m. boat. It was really early. and. I'm out there, I've got my little mug of herbal tea and I'm just enjoying the view and taking in some fresh air. And yeah, this, these are the kinds of things I was missing. My my um, kids have a little antique shop and they, you know, late in the day, they asked me, hey, tonight, do you wanna come and help us set up for Christmas? And I was like, sure. And so there we were, you know, 
doing all the shelves and rearranging everything. And, and I'm just so happy to do these things. This was on the trip to Prague that I showed earlier. I should have put these together. But in this one, um, it was actually, we had missed our flight by a few minutes in Frankfurt. And so we, this was actually at 3 a.m. at home. And it actually struck me really funny because I, it was broad daylight in Frankfurt. <laughs> So even things like my my blood work, that all makes me happy too. Last May um, 2023, I went and, and had a full panel of, of all my health markers and everything came out great. So yeah, my like my blood pressure was 102 over 64. Like that just makes me so happy. So I just want to encourage everyone as I wind up here to be your own success story. This is how I feel now. I'm 57, but I feel 21, which is how old I was in this picture. 21 or 22. My son made this for me with those AI tools and uh, it's the warrior. And that's kind of how I feel inside now. So one day you will tell your story of how you overcame what you went through and it will be someone else's survival guide. This is what I feel like I've been through is just remaking myself. So no, it didn't happen overnight. No, it's not gonna happen in 21 days, but 21 days to start will get you on your way. Trust your hard work. It's unlocking doors that you can't see yet. And that's kind of what's happened for me. I'm taking a coaching course right now and sitting and doing homework. And like, this is so unexpected for me. I got to go down to Chef AJ's conference in Sacramento a couple of times. I got to introduce Dr. Lyle at a conference and tell a little bit of my story. That was a real thrill for me. This is his book, The Pleasure Trap, has been one of the other keys to help me helping understand what's going on with me psychologically and why I can't give up the sweets, why I can't give up the baked goods, that kind of thing. This is, I actually heard Dr. Lyle say this, think of rich, self-indulgent food as heroin. Uh, I got to be featured in the uh, National Health Association Health Science Magazine. I mean, that uh, was so unexpected. This is riding my bike around Prague. If you had told me three or four years ago that I'd be riding a bike around Prague, I would have, I wouldn't have believed you. So this is kind of my little ending here is Susanna 2.0. That's kind of what I feel like. And the top picture I've actually just this week passed 9,000 kilometers ridden on my e-bike in uh, three years. So finding your people makes you realize there was nothing wrong with you. And that's, that's where I am as I feel like I've found my people. I feel like this is where I, this is where I fit. So there, I'll stop my slideshow. I'll come back on. That was amazing. And guys, if you have questions, we're happy to answer them. However, if you put them in the Q&A, they will stay until they're answered. I noticed that some of the comments are being going away from the chat. Like there was a great one that I wrote down about olive oil, which I'll address from Henry. And, you know, Susanna, I've been also, while I was listening to you, looking at the chat, some people were sending me private messages saying things like, you know, they had lost weight, but they gained it back and things like that. So, you know, uh, it, it, it's frustrating, obviously. Did, did you have that as part of your journey? Gaining back? Yes. Uh, you know, I've stopped weighing. <laughs> um, <laughs> It was, it was actually driving me crazy. Uh, the scale was driving me crazy because, you know, it's that whole binge, restrict, repeat cycle. Uh, so, you know, you weigh yourself. It's a good number. I can, I can eat a little more today. Now I weigh myself again and it's up. I'm going to restrict. And once I restrict, then 
I'm going to set myself up for another binge because I'm going to get too hungry. Right. And you're not, yeah, because exactly what people think that they're being good if they just eat fruits and vegetables. And I, I don't like people to think that way at all. You're not good if you eat one way and bad if you eat another. You might be sticking to a plan or not sticking to a plan. So we really like to take those words out of somebody's vocabulary. Yes. You know, after the summit, we offered the... Uh, maybe it wasn't even after the summit, maybe the before the summit, we have a program called the 30 day reboot. And a lot of people said, well, don't you have a more beginner's course? And we do. And we're going to talk about it at the very end because we don't want this to be a sales pitch. And we're going to tell you a little bit about it if you want to register. So what we're going to tell you though, are some of the principles of the program. So even if you don't join us in this 21 day journey, you'll have some of the tools that you can do it on your own if you can. But of course, we found that a lot of people can't do it on their own. <laughs> and that's going to be one of the principles. But I think we can break it down. Maybe you'll agree with me, Suzanne, and we'll talk about these into six pillars. And the first one, and you did a beautiful job in the presentation, is just the nutrition about what to eat, because there's so much confusion out there about, you know, like oil was one of the things, for example. And, and you know, I guess I will address this question now, Henry, because we recommend it, uh, whole foods. You know, we recommend it to be uh, completely ex plant exclusive. But the, the way I look at oil, Henry, isn't that so much that it's good or bad, but is it a whole food found in nature or is it a processed food? And can you make it in your own house? And yes, there are some doctors, even some vegan cardiologists now that are touting olive oil, but none of them were on the summit. And we had over 40 doctors on the summit, including some of the most respected, Dr. Michael Greger, Dr. Joel Furman, for example, and none of them are fans of oil. Because if you think about it, if there's something in the oil that you feel like you really need for your health, why wouldn't it be in the olive? What magically happens in the uh, highly processed manufacturing process, which often includes a toxic ingredient called lye, that takes a whole natural food, takes out everything good about it, the fiber, the water, the vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants, and micronutrients, and leaves the non-nutritive sludge. So if you feel there is something you need in you know, olive oil, then eat the olive. So you get everything. And you were saying that this particular doctor who, who obviously wasn't on the summit recommends four tablespoons a day. Well, that is, um, that's almost 600 calories, which is, which is if you're a female and if you're an older female, that, that could be like a third or sometimes even a half of your caloric intake for a food that is going to slip under the radar of the mechanisms of the satiety you're never going to feel full from eating it. You're not going to get any fiber. You're not going to get any nutrients. And so whether it is good or bad is almost immaterial because whatever is good about it, you can get in another more utilizable, healthier, less caloric form. And uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's just not weight loss friendly. I don't know people that have added olive oil or any oil, coconut oil, flax oil to their diet as a weight loss strategy. And so, it, you know, if you watch my YouTube show, Dr. Barnard was on just a couple of days ago, he said, you know, omit the oil or at least keep it low because if you're eating whole plant food, you're getting fat. People don't realize that greens have fat in them. Even fruit has trace amounts of fat. So, and especially since we're treating this as a 21 day experiment, you're not going to become fatty acid deficient in 21 days. So I recommend that people at least try to the best of their ability to follow the program as, as prescribed, knowing that nobody's perfect for 21 days. Did, did you feel like you had to be perfect? Did you beat yourself up if you had, because I know you, I, I know you. So I know you had a few of what I call snack accidents. Oh, I had many snack accidents. <laughs> but the thing is, is, um, well, you, I, you give that line, when you know better, you do better. And it's like, now I understand what, what's going on. This book, the, the Pleasure Trap, which I showed in my presentation, this is so key to understanding the psychology of it. If you've been a lifelong binger or, or, you know, just eating standard American diet food and you're addicted to it like that, you asked me earlier, what, which of the interviews in the first summit had resonated me with me. And it was probably those ones because I had never really heard of food addiction and I for sure didn't think I was one, you know? And so for me, understanding that, like, like now, so now, let's say right now, if I were to go off plan today and have something, I know now why I'm doing it and what's going on. And I know I've learned from you and your courses how to get back on track. 
And that's the difference is before I didn't have the tools, I wasn't equipped. And now I am equipped. So, so even if I have something with salt, oil or sugar, I, I don't like the way I feel when I feel it either, because now I know what it feels like to feel good. And when I was obese, I didn't even think I felt that bad until I started to feel I really started, good. I hear that so much. I didn't know how bad I felt until I started to feel yes. better. Yeah. Yes. You habituate to feeling bad, you know? Yes. Like yeah. You I, I so. eating junk food. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think I was just coping with life and now I feel like I'm thriving in my life. And that's a, that's a huge gift that you've given me is, is I am thriving in my life. I like even preparing for today, going back through my, my pictures again, Every time I do that, it, it evokes these feelings in me of, of just gratefulness and thankfulness for having found you and this way of eating. I, I'm just so thankful. Well, now I'm thankful because you're passing on this knowledge to others and carrying the torch. I think my favorite picture in your presentation was the one in the sweater where you were just kind of like slumped oh. over. <laughs> and you didn't, you know, you had like a somewhat smile on your face, but it didn't seem like the happiest smile like you had in the other pictures. No, no, exactly. And I know in that picture, I was actually saying to my husband, don't take my picture. Like, cause I knew I looked awful yeah. <laughs> and I knew I felt awful. And, you know, it's sad because we were away at, a little vacation spot with our youngest two kids and and you know I was just getting by you know and and waiting for my next hit of food which would have been at a restaurant and crappity crap in the hotel room like that's and so you know then you get that instant high followed by the instant crash and you do it again it's you know it's a it's a vicious cycle that I was in. And, and you know what you said about now I can share it. And that's why I'm continuing to educate myself. And that's why I'm continuing to, to come to your courses and, and that kind of thing, because I feel I, it's, it's just around the corner. My addictions are just there. Well, there's that line about that. My addictions are over in the corner doing push-ups. Yeah, say that a, just when you're, when, just when you think you're, you're, yeah. you're getting sober, your addiction is in the corner doing push-ups. Yeah. Yep. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's really, really great. You know, one of the things that we teach in, in the course, and even if you don't take the course, I really recommend you learn it because it's in the first pillar of nutrition is this concept called calorie density. And for me, that was, a, other than what you said about learning about food addiction and the pleasure trap from Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer, that was a game changer. And I learned it mostly from a book called Volumetrics from Dr. Barbara Rolls, who we are so grateful, who almost never does interviews. She's very much of an introvert and she has blessed us on the summit every single year because she's done more research in the field of calorie density than anybody else in a laboratory at Penn State University. And that's really the only nutritional concept that we we say you need to master to understand what we call the lose weight with a full plate method. There were many books written on calorie density before I discovered it. I learned it at the True North Health Center as a patient, but so many of the wonderful doctors, plant-based doctors like Dr. Dean Ornish wrote a best-selling book called Eat More, Way Less. And that is the foundation of the eating style we recommend that Suzanne and I do that we continue today. That's why it's so fun. If you want to go see us in Mexico together, we'll be at Rancho La Puerta. And while everybody else is, is eating their little spa portions and weighing and measuring a half a cup of rice, me and Susanna are gorging on huge plates of food because we eat in accordance with the principles of calorie density, which when you understand, you really can, as Dr. Dean Warner says, eat more, weigh less. As a matter of fact, when you really understand caloric density and aren't including things like the oils, you can, you can literally eat twice as much food by volume and take in half as many calories. So if you're somebody that likes to eat and I love to eat and I'm a volume eater, I don't like skimpy portions. It's, it's a really great thing to do that. And one of the ways that you skew calorie density in your favorite is by being mindful of the fat. It is not a no fat diet. People think uh, it is a zero fat diet. That is absolutely impossible because as we said, even fruit has trace amounts of fat. Green vegetables have about 3% of their calories from fat. Oats have about 20% of their calories from fat. So if you're eating enough calories, you are getting enough fat and it's not how much fat 
that is important, but the type of fat, which is specifically the omega-3 fatty acids. And so when you're not eating oils and processed food and animal products, you're not getting so much of the omega-6, so you don't need as much as the omega-3. But if you're worried, there's a couple of things you can do. One of the things I've done every year for the past 12 years since I began my weight loss journey, my final weight loss journey, because I had lots of slips and slides before that, is I get a blood test that's, uh, you can actually get it, even if your doctor won't order it at Quest and LabCorp, you can just ask for it. You have to pay for it, of course. If your doctor doesn't order it, then your your insurance may not pay if you do a walk-in. But it's called a fatty acid profile, and it measures the amount of AHA, DLA, you know, all your fatty acids. And so you can first see if you are deficient. And if you're worried, you know, you can have a tablespoon or even two tablespoons of ground flax seeds or chia seeds in your oatmeal or your salad. But by keeping you have to understand that fat is more than twice as calorically dense as protein or carbohydrates, which have, and we, in the course, we go into great detail about, I mean, I feel like if I have one superpower, it's to teach calorie density, because I learned it so well from people like Dr. Goldhammer, Dr. Lyle, and Dr. McDougall, but protein and carbohydrates, whether they're healthy or not, have four calories per gram. Alcohol has seven calories per gram, almost twice as much, which is why ladies and others, it's not favorable for weight loss. It's also a liquid calorie and fat has more than double at nine calories per gram, which is why restaurant eating can be so problematic. And one of the things, you know, I love to think about what I learned from the summit, because like you say, you're like, wow, I'm always learning. And I think, I think people that are perpetual learners or perpetual students often can, can do better when they're uh, gleaning this information. But I believe it was Dr. Susan Roberts, who actually has a laboratory right across the, it, it Tufts University. And, and one of the things she mentioned is, you know, and I have worked in a restaurant, so I can tell you that this is true. Not every restaurant has to have their nutritional information online. I believe they have to have, it's like three locations or something, and then by law, they have to. But when they give you that nutritional information, which shows the protein, the carbohydrates, the fat, they're only giving you what is in the recipe. So... When they are taking their olive oil in the pan to saute that onion or saute those vegetables that are going whatever your dish is, maybe it's four tablespoons, that's not in the nutritional information, which is why a typical restaurant meal will have 500 calories more in general than one that you would prepare at home. And like I said, oil slips under the radar undetected by the mechanisms of satiety. And so sometimes just eliminating oil I've seen people lose weight, like, like, and I'll give you an example. My husband, who's always been lean, I stopped using oil August 1st, 2008, after hearing Dr. Esselstyn, who was a speaker on the summit the first year, talk about how to make yourself heart attack proof. You want to stop all oils. And so I did it for health reasons. I was still overweight at the time. And I remember about seven months after stopping oil, because I do all the cooking in my household. I, at the time, my husband worked outside the house, so I would make his breakfast, send lunch with him, make dinner. I met seven months after stopping oil and nothing else really changed, he had to attend a, a formal function and he tried to put his belt on and it was too big. And we didn't own a scale at the time. And he goes, oh my God, I must have cancer. My, he, he had lost so much weight. He lost, I believe it was something like 11 pounds in seven months. Now this is somebody that didn't want to lose weight, that didn't need to lose weight, that basically was being experimented on against their will. And I'm saying, if this person can lose all that weight that doesn't need to, imagine if you did it on purpose. And really, for a period of 21 days, whether you take the course or not, just do an experiment on your own, just stopping oils. Can for 21 days, you stop eating oil and stop eating at restaurants. And one of the reasons, it, we, you know, we were going to start the program right after the summit and then people goes, oh no, but then, you know, we, we've got holidays, we've got, you know, Easter, like it's a big deal. So we're going to wait until April 1st to start the program because it's a fresh start on a Monday and it's only 21 days. And we feel that many people have done very difficult things for 42 days. It was a holiday called Lent. This is half a Lent. And we feel that if you treat it more as an experiment, you can do anything for 21 days or at least do your best. So you know, the idea of the lose weight with a full plate method, which is based on calorie density, is eating enough calories to get an abundance of nutrient, but having lowering the calories of what you're eating now so that you can safely, sustainably lose weight. And, you know, Susanna, let's talk about the time frame because I think people are, you know, especially now with all these weight loss drugs, which by the way, I have a friend who her job, and she was on the summit one year, is to counsel people to get if they're getting gastric bypass, but really what she's trying to do is a person that lost a hundred pounds 
on a whole food plant exclusive diet is to kind of discourage them to, or at least get them to try this first. And every day she sends me an article about the, the current lawsuits or people that are um, having, you know, permanent side effects from these drugs, which is like gastric stasis where like their stomach isn't moving anymore. Or uh, Tracy Morgan came out yesterday with an interview saying he gained weight on these drugs. And yes, they work and they work quickly, but you have to take them forever. And so I, one, one of the things I want to say is um, I think probably um, my, my biggest piece of advice to anyone struggling to lose weight or just wanting to lose weight is that whatever you do, you have to do forever. So it just it doesn't matter. You can do my program. You can take the weight loss drugs if you have the money and are scared of these horrific side effects. But you it's you know, even with gastric bypass, you can you can out eat the bypass. I can't tell you how many people I know actually, and I know one person that actually died from the operation personally, because they nicked the, uh, the a blood vessel, you can, um, you can out eat it. So people, people can learn to do that. Because even though the stomach has been made mechanically smaller, you can still put really high calorie things in it. And, and a lot of people, believe it or not, start drinking alcohol um, after gastric bypass, because they're still if you haven't identified the reasons that you are looking for these comfort foods, which at the end of the day, really don't make you more comfortable, you will find a way to, to, to outdo that. And if you think about calorie density, it really is nature's gastric bypass, because instead of artificially or mechanically making your stomach smaller, you're making the food bigger so that you feel more satisfied, but on fewer calories, activating the mechanisms of satiety known as the stretch nutrient and calorie receptors. So that's kind of a cool concept. You know, I like how you, you talked about Susanna, you know, um, you know, that you felt bad, but you were, you kind of habituated to feeling bad, but you were using some of these foods to get this dopamine hit. And I think that I read somewhere that when you do that, you know, you have about three minutes of pleasure, but then you have like a lifetime of suffering. Is it worth, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the thing is, I, I was thinking about this when you were talking about the, the, you know, gastric bypass and Ozempic and that kind of thing is like, you know, I needed to learn how to eat. And that's what these programs did for me is they taught me this. And because I sort of accepted early on, I, I stopped kicking and screaming <laughs> and, and accepted that, you know what, the people that have done this ahead of me, it's been, it's worked for them. So I'm just going to trust that. And, and so that was one of the nice things about this program is like it it breaks it down into <laughs> bite-sized pieces where in the morning you know you get a, a little email and um with video and and you just watch that and it's just sort of one thought for the day one task and so I literally did it so if if today's task was sit and write this letter to yourself then I actually did it and and almost like by rote, I just forced myself to do the things, to do the assignments and do the homework because I wanted what you guys had. I wanted your success. So after several courses, I guess I realized that I didn't put this weight on overnight. It took me a lot of years to get this weight this heavy. And so it was going to take me some time to take it off too. And that's, I think part of the problem is in the, in the media and social media and stuff, it, it just, there's a, you know, you lose 10 pounds in a week and, and lose 50 pounds in a month. And it's like, no, it's not going to come off that fast. It's not going to work that way. And so I sort of had to let go of that quick method and, and um, because at the same time of losing the weight, I was also learning. I was learning how to eat, how to feed myself. And you know that expression from the airplanes of put your own oxygen mask on before assisting others. That's what I had to do. So I had to, uh, you know, I've been making bread for my family for 25 years, grinding my own flour and eating all the bread. And I had to stop making bread for a time. I can do it now. But but during the time of, I don't know, I don't want to call it detox, but but because it was years, you know, where I couldn't make cookies, I couldn't, I couldn't bake, I couldn't, you know, I did a lot of that. And I still I don't live in what we call a clean environment. My not all of my family is eating this way. And 
know, I'm, I'm at getting to a different stage where I've got three away at university. So they then come home and, you know, flood the home with junk food and stuff. And I mean, I've taken pictures. I know I sent you a picture, AJ, once and my, one of my sons had come home with a box of a dozen donuts. I was sitting on the computer doing your YouTube live show as a moderator. And there was a box of donuts sitting right there beside me. And you know, you said throw it out. Well, I, I, I'm an agreeable person. I couldn't throw out my, the, the donuts that my son had brought home for his brother. But, you know, I took the opportunity to actually have a conversation with him. He's 20. And I said, do you think you could just put that like in the back room or something where people could access it instead of it being right in front of me? And I mean, I long since lost all my weight. And he said, he surprised me. He said, that still bothers you? And I said, yes, it does still bother me. So, you know, I know not everybody lives with people that are going to be accepting of this way of eating, but, um, you know, you can find ways around it. Uh, you know, asking them to, one thing I did was on top of my fridge in my laundry room, I, I had a like, well, here in Canada, we have super real Canadian superstore. So I had a superstore bin where I put their potato chips and their munchie mix and their bag of popcorn and stuff so that it was out of my line of sight. And I tried to set up my environment. So it was a little bit safer for me. I had a, um, you know, I've, I've, kind of got two zones in the pantry that are mine. And I turned a coat cupboard into a, um, a canned good storage area. So, so I know that that's safe for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's something we talk about. And guys, if you just joined us, um, this, I'm Chef AJ. I'm here with Susanna, one of our success stories from the 21 day program called lose weight with a full plate. And we're actually going over the six pillars that we teach in the course. So if you can't join us in the course, which starts April 1st, at least you'll have some tips and tricks that can hopefully get you started doing your own 21 day experiment. So uh, in, in environment, I think for sure we're going to talk about, and I, I'll tell you my, my story, like when I started and I remember the day that I really was, that was my final attempt and my permanent attempt for weight loss. It was January 2nd, 2012. We used to have a lot of chips in the house. My husband is lean. He's plant-based, but he can eat anything. And uh, these were, these were fairly compliant chips. In other words, at the time in Long Los Angeles, they made a tortilla chip that didn't have salt, but uh, didn't have oil. And I don't think it even had salt, but they were just something that like, you know, once you pop, you just can't stop. And at the time I lived in a 1000 square foot apartment and I asked him, I said, you know, I really can't have these in the house. He goes, well, okay, I'll hide them. Well, you know, where are you going to hide them? So anyway, so he, you know, he understood that uh, this was a problem for me. And I know that not everyone's family does, especially if they don't understand some of these concepts. And especially if you aren't willing to talk about them, you should never feel shame or guilt for this. Because if you read The Pleasure Trap or watch some of the interviews with Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer, you'll understand that if you struggle, it is not your fault. I mean, it's your responsibility if you want to get healthier and lose weight to change what you're eating, which can involve changing your environment, but it's not your fault. You're not broken. There's nothing. I mean, maybe there's something wrong with you. I don't know, but it's not because there's something wrong with you emotional or because you had some bad experience, which, you know, if you did, I'm sorry about it's really because of the food, because these foods were engineered to be addictive and calorically dense. They didn't exist throughout most of human history. If you know your great grandparents or have pictures, I'm guessing they're probably not overweight or, you know, so that, you know, at the beginning, um, I had to get a lot, that's a locked food safe, you know, and he had, if he had those foods, he had to keep them somewhere else. Now it's great because we have a bigger house and there's one room that's so messy. I never go in. So he keeps all his nuts and stuff in there. So it, it doesn't bother me. And also I'm, I'm much farther out with my journey and I, those foods just really don't appeal, appeal to me as much anymore. So just to recap, the first pillar is really based on nutrition, which is understanding what to eat, which is a whole food plan, exclusive diet. We recommend and sophistry, sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, salt, because we find that works best. But, you know, I, I'm perfectly happy when people do a more McDougal style approach with a little bit of sugar and salt, because I have always said, do the least restrictive program that you can do that will get you the re results you seek. But honestly, uh, for weight loss, just strict weight loss, I don't see alcohol and oil being helpful to people or even flour. But even if you grind your own, like Susanna was doing for her own bread, you have to understand that whole grains are about 500 calories per pound. When you grind them into a flour to make 
dessert or bread, they're now 1800 calories per pound. And when you, when they're commercially done, all the, all the, you know, the beneficial nutrients are generally stripped out or bleached out. And, you know, if you think about your stomach, it's about the size of a cantaloupe. So it holds about, I think it's about four liters of food. If I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've looked at those uh, numbers. If you fill it with just rice, which I often do for a meal, 500 calories of say brown rice or wild rice, it will fill your stomach. You will activate your stretch nutrient and calorie receptors. But if you grind that into a flour, you need triple the amount to feel full. So basically, it's if you think about just eating foods as grown, food from a plant instead of foods manufactured in a plant, that's a great step in the right direction. So that that's number one, nutrition. But also what we teach in the second pillar is making it easy. Because if it's not sustainable, you know, you're not going to be able to do it. You can do anything for a short amount of time. So unless you can afford to have a, you know, a private chef or do, they are whole food, plant exclusive without sugar, oil, salt, food delivery services now. And I'd be happy to share them with you. Uh, there's many of them now, more than ever existed before. One that specializes in Indian food. There, there's so many now. There's at least three that I can think of off the top of my head. And you can do that. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. I mean, we even have a few of their entrees in our freezer for when I travel for my husband, Charles. But you have to find a way to get the food into your mouth. And it has to be easy. And Suzanne is going to share some of her secrets because like she's cooking. She has eight children. I have just one, one husband and one dog. But you have to figure out a system that will work for you. And in, I've, heard, I've seen a few things in the chat. Well, you know, how do you get started? How do you continue? Really, it's not about willpower because willpower is a very short lived commodity and it depletes as the day goes on and as you have to make decisions. And that's why having, if not a completely clean environment, but the cleanest environment that you can have during the 21 days, which again, we really recommend you treat as an experiment so that you don't get into what Dr. Lau calls the ego trap and feel like you have to be perfect, but you want the cleanest environment you can have, whether it's asking the family to remove them for 21 days. If you live alone, you don't have an excuse as to why it's there. Just throw them out, give them away, lock them up for 21 days, relocate them, get your own fridge, or just move things around so that for 21 days you can focus on you. And, and I think you deserve to do that. But you have to find a way to have the food. And if you don't have a chef, if you're not using a food delivery service, you've got to look at cooking techniques, equipments, for example, that's going to make your life easier. For me, that is the Instant Pot. I had an Instant Pot. It can be any brand, but I'm calling it Instant Pot because that's what I have forever. They come in three quart, six quart, eight quart, 10 quart. But Instant Pots are amazing because you can get food on the table fast. And when it's on the table fast, it's in your mouth fast. There's a tool called a slow cooker, a crock pot. They're wonderful. I use them sometimes when I have potlucks to keep things warm. But if you didn't plan ahead that morning, it takes six to eight hours. You come home from work tired, hangry as they call it, hungry, angry. What is that? Hungry, angry, lonely. Yeah. Yeah. Lonely, tired and stressed. Halts. Right. Exactly. You you know, you're not going to have dinner right away. So if you have an instant pot, you know, a lot of my recipes like black bean mushroom chili, five minutes in the instant pot, for example, but also batch cooking. Learn, And we teach all this in the course, learning techniques to batch cook. And like Susanna showed, you can make rice in advance and freeze it. And same with beans. And you can even buy frozen organic rice and quinoa, at least at all the stores near me. You microwave it for three minutes or, you know, you can make it yourself. But we teach you how to make food, not just bland, but delicious. And we learn to, to adapt to seasoning food without salt and still making it flavorful, making it sweet without sugar and in making food taste good without fat. Some of the machines can help with that. For example, an air fryer, if you're somebody that craves french fries, you can make the most delicious and actually crunchier than if you fried them in oil french fries with an air fryer. It doesn't have to be the $400 Breville. There, it can be the, the $39 one from Sam's Club or, or Costco if you have memberships there or even Walmart. So these are things that we'll teach you in the class and we'll hear from Susanna which, which things she used for her weight loss journey, which was over 70 pounds now. But also we teach you how to add more vegetables to your diet, particularly greens. And one of the reasons we do that isn't just because greens, vegetables in general, but greens and specifically are the most nutrient dense foods on the planet is because they have this compound that Dr. Greger actually talked about in his best-selling book, How Not to Diet, phylicoids. And if, as soon as the supplement industry realizes this, 
I'm sure that pretty soon, just like Ozempic, we're going to see thylakoid supplements because what thylakoids do, and they're only found in the cruciferous ones. I mean, there's nothing wrong with eating zucchini and cherry tomatoes. They're great. They're technically fruits, but in the greens, broccoli, broccoli and cauliflower are greens, by the way, it doesn't have to be kale. It doesn't have to be arugula is these thylakoids actually turn off the hunger switch. They, they block fat absorption and they just stop the cravings for sweets. And so that's why we don't recommend you just eat greens for breakfast, but to have them as part of your, actually part of every meal, Dr. Esselstyn recommends that for all of his patients, whether they are overweight or not, they have this magical quality. And so if you don't like them, we teach you how to like them through the recipes, but also there's stealth methods where you can hide them in food so that you don't taste them. And it, there's some greens that are so neutral, for example, beet greens that are sweet that you can chop up finely in your salad. So that is just a key component. And, and we want you to get it from eating the food, not taking a supplement, even though, you know, there are green powders that you know, some people have successfully used, uh, you can actually make your own green powder if you have a dehydrator, but they, it, it, until you try this for a period of 21 days and see how magical it is, you probably won't believe me. And the other thing is, is vegetables, as we talked about in the first pillar, are the most calorically dilute food on the planet. It's interesting how the, the food that is the most calorically dilute, the fewest calories per pound, about 100, is the food that has the most nutrients. And then the food that has no nutrients, which is olive oil or oil, 4,000 calories per pound, has the most calories and has the fewest nutrients. And, and one of the things Dr. Joel Furman talked about in the summit is that when you're nutrient deficient, because you haven't been eating enough fruits and vegetables, you're always going to overeat on calories. Susanna, I'd love to hear what cooking techniques, what equipment you used and you implemented on your over 70 pound weight loss journey to make it easy for you and sustainable. Well, I have to say that at the start, I didn't have any of the equipment and that didn't matter. Um, you know, I, I love to cook. I'm, you know, not everybody does. Um, and so for me, that part of it was like an interesting journey because I, it's like I've switched from wanting to cook, um, you know, rich, delicate dishes to this way of eating, but it, like I just transferred my love of cooking into this way of cooking and eating. And so, yeah, so as as time went on, I, I started off with a really inexpensive air fryer um, and then, you know, asked for for um, extended family, you know, instead of birthday gifts one year, I said, you know, I'm trying to save for this fancy air fryer. And, and so I was able to get it. And, and, um, I also do have, a, um, two instant pots. Now that's a real time saver. Um, you know, I wish I'd had that in the earlier years because I actually homeschool my kids. And so I, at, in my early years often would have three crock pots going at once or in uh, slow cookers, whatever you want to call them at once in my kitchen, because I, I had a big family to feed. And, um, and then the other thing is the batch cooking that has made a huge difference for me, especially when I've got all my university guys back home. It's like, I, I can't be cooking, you know, I've, I've for these three years, I've been cooking two meals every, almost every day. And so for me, it it's easier to have stuff batched cooked for myself. And so some people like to batch cook like, you know, once every weekend and I'm going to do everything all at once. That hasn't worked for me. And that's one of the cool things about this these types of programs and this way of eating in general is that you kind of have to find what works for you. And, and, you know, you throw out lots of different ideas of ways to try. And so I would try things and then, I, you know, some of them clicked with me and, and some of them didn't. And, and so I just left those behind, you know, and the other thing I was going to say too, just, just popped into my head when you were talking about vegetables is, you know, being over 70 pounds overweight, I got to admit, I didn't eat a lot of vegetables at that time. And so switching to eating a lot of vegetables was kind of hard for me um, because I didn't think anything tasted good. And, you know, you guys in the courses and stuff would say how good everything tasted. And I, I wasn't there like, but, you know, I just trusted the process. And that was the thing that was key for me because, you know, it takes a while to neuroadapt away from, 
the sugar and the salt and the fat. And you, you guys have given that example of like, you know, when you walk into a movie theater and it's all dark and you're late and you can't see the people that you're supposed to be sitting with, you just wait a sec. You just wait, wait a minute in the aisle and then everything, your brain neuroadapts, your vision enables you to see. And that's kind of what this felt like for me is, is that, you know, they keep saying the food tastes good. So I'm just going to trust that and wait and, and not complain and kick and scream. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah. So yeah. And, you, and the truth is, is you don't have to have anything. I mean, well, you, I mean, you have to, I would assume a refrigerator and an oven, but these are things that are not essential. They just can make it easier, especially for people that are busy that have families like Susanna. And, you know, that's why, especially for the 21 day period, which we, you know, we really recommend doing what Dr. Lyle says. And I don't know if I would be as successful as I was if I hadn't gone to him for private counseling in January of 2011, actually. And even after meeting him, it still took me a year to do it. So hopefully you guys won't wait a year to make some kind of changes, but he really recommends don't saying, okay, well, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life and never tell yourself you're going to be perfect because that is a, that you set yourself up to fail. It's called the ego trap when you set the bar so high that you end up just kicking over the table in frustration and you don't do anything. And, and also realize just because you can't do everything, especially because you may not be able to do everything perfect, not that anyone can, except maybe Dr. Alan Goldhammer, doesn't mean you shouldn't make some changes and start doing something. But when you treat as an experiment at, with a curious mind of somebody just getting information, especially if you're somebody that's willing to like write things down in journal and write down what you eat. You know, I, I always hear this, the saying in my mind, success leaves clues. And so by doing it as an experiment, Experiment, you can't fail because you haven't set yourself up by going on YouTube. This is, I see this all the time. And I'm so glad, you know, Suzanne is very selective in, in her presentations, which I think is really wise because I, I see so many people do their weight loss journeys publicly and, and they're astounding. And then when they relapse, you know, they often go away because it, it, it's, there's too much pressure when, when you do it that way. So just look at this as an example of something you're doing for your health, even more than weight loss. Weight loss is a result of health, by the way. It's not, it's not the other way around. You don't lose weight and get healthy. You get healthy. And then as a consequence, you lose weight. And so what we're teaching, the way we teach to eat is the way that pretty much all the plant-based doctors eat, whether, and not very many of them are, I don't know, many of them that are overweight and very few have ever been overweight. And so we teach a very healthy whole food plant exclusive diet. And again, it's one free of processed food. And, you know, even if you just gave up processed food, you know, and think about it, oil, flour, alcohol, those are all processed foods, sugar. So if you just look at that at giving up processed foods, you're going to be in the right direction for achieving greater health, in my opinion, because again, going back to the first pillar of nutrition, the processed foods are calorically dense because they never existed in nature. All the foods that nature created, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, with a few exceptions of foods that were seasonal, like nuts and seeds, for example, coconuts that were only seasonal and very difficult for our ancestors to get. These are, these are the foods that you want to focus on. These are foods of a caloric density of less than 600 calories per pound. And most people, if they're not adding sugar and oil and salt and flour to them, can, can freely eat. So you know, when you're so far away from eating this way, when you've been on a standard American diet for 30 plus years, I didn't even know what to eat when I first started. And, you know, like on the back of your book is um, the calorie density chart. And that was one thing that I did. I took, I wrote on a little post-it note, four things. I put vegetables, fruit, beans, grains, and that's that was what on my fridge so that I would know because if I didn't have a meal ready, like a prepared recipe, I felt like I didn't have anything to eat. And so that kind of helped to steer me in how to, how to begin. Yep. So one of the pillars that we talk about are the social dynamics. And one of the great things about being in the 21 day course is that especially if you don't have the support that you would like right now, either from your friends or family, um, we give it to you because the, the, the amount of support in the 21 days is incredible because we have this new upgraded forum with, co with three coaches and we have three because, you know, they each can do, <laughs> do eight hours. Not that they're going to be there all eight hours, but they're, they, they will help you very quickly and you meet other people and you realize you're not really alone that your, your situation, while it's unique to you, 
in general, it is not that unique. Most people suffer with the problem of excess weight and the pleasure trap in our society now. If you want to know why, just watch yesterday's YouTube with Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer. They call it the hidden force that undermines your health and happiness. So it's really important for most people to have some kind of a network or some kind of support or somebody they can relate to, whether it's one person, a buddy, a coach, or in this case, a whole course of people. And to create a safe environment, even if your other people in the household don't eat that way. And Susanna mentioned she does not live in a clean environment and she still was able to lose over 70 pounds in an unclean environment by implementing certain tips and tricks so that at least when she opened the fridge, she wasn't seeing, you know, you know, a chocolate fudge cake. You can move things around. You can put things in darker containers. There are ways to navigate an unclean environment to be as successful as possible. And we'll teach you some of them. And also when you're in a forum, you can ask other people what they do when they have this situation, you know, when they have a kid that's picky or on the spectrum, you know, there are other people that I'm sure are going through the same or similar things with you that you will meet. So and also how to deal with unsupportive people. That's a big one. Um, some people are married to people that not only don't support them, but sabotage them. So it's really important to build a, a, a support network, a success network, if you will. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. Well, I didn't know. I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, didn't you, you, didn't you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes. That's yes, good. for sure. I mean, I, you know, through your courses and stuff. I've actually met people that are now friends in my real life. And uh, we have um, little chats going on um, on WhatsApp and stuff. And and I even met somebody in person that lives in my area. And so that was that's just really fun to to have some people to go along the way with with this. And, you know, that's one thing that I was thinking back about my first couple of courses, like I really made an effort to put my camera on. I know not everybody's super brave about that, but I pushed myself forward on that because I felt like, you know, I'm part of a group here and I want to be seen and known and and support other people while I'm here too. And so so for me that was just a little a little extra thing that I did to kind of maximize what I, my value out of one of the courses was to was to have my camera on and be engaged in the forum and um, ask my what I thought were dumb questions at the time and and because I wasn't understanding everything and and you know I did find the success coaches to be very supportive and and the other participants as well. Right, because the success coaches all have been through their own journey with managing food addiction and weight loss. And one of the other things we talk about in the third pillar of social dynamics is how to eat out and how to navigate a restaurant menu. Ideally, since we waited till after the holiday, and there's, I looked that up, there's no holidays in April between April 1st and 21st because Easter's early and Passover's late this year. If you can, don't eat restaurants for the, for the, for the first 21 days and see how that works for you. But if you have to, we help you do that. So we've gone over three of the pillars in the 21 day lose weight with a full place course so far with the first one being nutrition, the second one being how to make it easy to get the food and eat the food, the third social dynamics. And the fourth, this is a big one because I've seen people uh, post in the chat about, well, what do you, you know, how do you not go back to the refrigerator? And I put that under the area of cravings. And so that is something that is is a problem for a lot of people, especially if you've been eating a lot of processed food, high in sugar, fat, and salt, and you stop, you can actually go through a period of, I mean, some people call it grieving, FOMO, fear of missing out. Some people, I think that the detox is real for people, if not a physiological one, a an emotional one. You know, how, how did you deal with craving, Susanna? And I'll, then I'll give some of my tips. Well, you know, I, I would have to say at first I really had to white knuckle it, you know, meaning like just barely hanging on. Um, <clears throat> and what has made the big difference for me is understanding uh, that the source of my cravings are actually eating the food. <laughs> and so when you stop eating the food <clears throat> that isn't health promoting and has all these artificial man-made chemicals, even the sugar and everything else, when you stop pumping that into your brain, it actually quiets down. And that is an amazing feeling when you've been fighting this for your whole life. You know, I mean, I, although I wasn't 
heavy as a child, I was very definitely a sugar addict, you know, and we would go to the corner store and, and get bags of candy. I've mentioned before, I remember eating jello powder out of a box with my finger, like <clears throat> frosted flakes and fruit loops. And that was breakfast and beefaroni in a can for dinner. And, and so, so I think trusting this process was, was a hard thing for me to do, to give it, to give up my, my food addiction. Um, I, th I think it's always going to be there kind of in the background, but, um, I cannot believe the freedom in my brain, no longer feeling that pull. It's funny that you mentioned jello powder. Cause it just, I, you made me think of a candy that I ate over 60 years ago. And I don't think it's made anymore. It was called Licka made and it was the same thing. And then it became fun dip. And I, yeah. I used to remember eating Betty Crocker or Duncan Hines frosting from a can, like literally just eating the frosting. Yeah. 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 Like I, I mean, I remember, you know, when, when my mom would bake, like scooping stuff out of the mixing bowl and eating like a mound of cookie dough off the top, like, like just a terrible sugar addict. Yeah. And, you know, also flour addiction for me was a big one. And so even early on in my weight loss, I felt, I, I did feel in mourning about giving up bread and it took me longer to, um, you know, it wasn't till July, 2022 that I, I was able to completely break free from alcohol. And I wasn't a huge drinker, but I definitely would have a glass of wine on the weekend or three. And um, <laughs> I love it. Oh, wine or three. <laughs> and so, you know, learning how to manage social situations without that was a really interesting process for me, but I felt ready for it. And it is such a you know, Dr. Lyle teaches about the internal audience. It's such an amazing feeling to understand what that self-esteem feels like, because I didn't realize that I was devoid of self-esteem for, for a long, long time. And um, so it actually, it, it all kind of dovetails together once it starts to click for you. And, and it's, it's not going to be overnight and it might not even be in the 21 days, but, it, but you start to see a glimmer, you know, you start to see, maybe I can do this. I just did a whole day, you know? Right. We, we take it a day at a time, a meal at a time, a bite at a time. And it's yeah. interesting because there are people, even medical doctors that don't believe in this notion of, of, of food being addictive and then you get them in the 21 day program and they like, Whoa, I can't even go one day without, you know, filling your blank. And, 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 you know, it, it's interesting. And so the thing is the cravings don't last forever uh, because if they did, no one would ever be able to do this. But I will tell you, I want to reiterate what Susanna said is when you scratch that itch, when you indulge the craving, as difficult as it is to not indulge the craving, it's sort of like not scratching an itch. Now, now I have an itch. <laughs> but, but you actually can not scratch an itch. There, I mean, it may be uncomfortable, but when you indulge the craving, it doesn't make it go away, guys. It intensifies the craving and it leads to more cravings. And so this is a big one for people. And 21 days is not enough to solve a lifetime of food addiction and excess weight, but it can give you a nice start. And, you know, one of the things we help you learn in the, in the uh, fourth pillar of cravings is to identify what your trigger foods are and practical tips that we can give you and work with you on to replace them or avoid them. Because in the, in the 21 day course, it's not just daily modules and emails, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit more exactly what it is. And then we'll answer your questions. But there's like right now we're having which will probably be about a two hour session. We'll have at least those every single week. So at least three of them in the 21 days where you can ask myself, the other coaches or other people, we can even put you in breakout rooms if you want, how they dealt with it. And the thing is, is we can't paint everybody with the same brush because salt, for example, some people can include it. It's not a problem, but you have to know 
what is the problem for you and not just do what somebody else says or what some doctor mm -hmm. says. You know, we know that nuts are very healthy, but believe me, the more people I work with, the more I realize that, you know, like they say in AA, one drink, one drug, one Brazil nut, one pound of Brazil nuts. So the thing is, is you have to know what your trigger foods are. That's the most important thing. And you are unique. You're not like anyone else. And then we teach the strategies that you have to implement so that you don't have to rely on willpower and discipline. And of course, batch cooking in a clean environment are things that can actually help that. But most importantly, we teach you how to be prepared so that when you have temptations, you have other things you can do. And so we spend a lot of time on this because this is something that really is uh, difficult for people. And of course, we can't give you the whole 21 day course in this webinar, but we're just doing an overview of the things that will teach you and, and things that help other people. And we can dive deeper as we get into the fifth pillar, which is, I, I call it more mind self and mindset. And this is where the self love comes in. And uh, you, you talked about one of the things about writing the letter to yourself, but the thing that we want to find out early and we talk about this early in the program is what my friend, Dr. Rosanna Alviera talks about, not just the why, but the why that makes you cry and identifying that. Because if your goal is to lose weight because you have your high school reunion coming up, uh, you probably will be successful. But I can't guarantee that the weight is going to stay off if that is the only reason you're trying to lose weight. And unfortunately, uh, that's what happens to a lot of people because they're losing weight for an event, their daughter's wedding. Uh, but they're, they're not really learning principles or techniques or something that's even sustainable. So therefore, if you find your particular why that makes you cry, maybe you want to be around for your grandchildren. You can't get up or down off the floor right now to play with them. Everybody's is going to be different, but identifying that and having that be front and center of your 21 day experiment can really help. And I know Susanna is going to be having grandchildren soon. And uh, it, this was before she even entered a, the phase of her permanent weight loss journey, but you've got to identify yours. And that's something we help you with very early on. And we teach you strategies so that you can stay committed long-term past the 21 days. And of course, ways to decrease stress because that's, you know, I love stress. I have a magnet somewhere. Stressed is dessert spelled backwards and to find, you peace within yourself. You know, there, there's a saying that if hunger isn't the problem, food isn't the solution. And so th this is things that we work on a bit. And also it, teaching you that uh, exercise is not something you do as a punishment because you had a bad eating day, but more important than just like exercising is to increase the movement and how to add it to your day without even feeling like you have to exercise. I know that you have an e-bike now, but how did you implement, you know, moving your body more at the beginning when you were, you know, cause it's obviously when you're 70 pounds heavier at when you're heavier, unless you're doing something in the water, it, it can be a little bit more difficult to, to get it's, like, it's start. very difficult. You know, we had 50 pounds of oat groats. My husband came home with the two bags and held them up and he was like, like you lost more than this. Well, imagine going around trying to, to go to a gym or something while carrying those bags. It's like practically impossible. And so I started just putting in little bits of movement into my day. So our house has stairs. And so I used to just send the kids up. Hey, can you go get me the such and such from the bedroom or whatever? And now I go. And I look at, uh, and that's what I did right from the beginning. Another thing I did was got myself just a little inexpensive set of exercise bands. They're just like, I don't know, long elastic bands. And I kept them near where I keep my computer on the main floor. And, you know, you can just stretch them and, and do things like that. You know, uh, those were the kind of things I started going for little walks just around my neighborhood. I, I couldn't face a big walk. Like I said, we do have a lot of hills. And so, but I could face a little walk. I could face a 10 minute walk and, and at my own pace. And, and um, so those are some of the things that I did at the very start and getting that e-bike was actually pretty early on for me, but any bike will do, <laughs> um, you know, because I was working with a plant-based dietitian at the time. And she said like, what exercise or movement did you like when you were young? Well, I loved riding my bike. I loved it. And so that's when she suggested if, if I had the means to look into this e-bike, just, um, yeah, I, it's changed my life that like I go run errands, I go to the bank, I go to the library, I go to the grocery, I got baskets on the back so I can go get my produce and, 
And I find it very fun to be out in nature now. And that's what I was missing. I was, I was never outside, you know, I might sit on the back deck, but that's about it. I, I didn't spend any time outside and now I kind of crave it. So, yeah, and, and, and people have to realize if they're in a position, you know, some people have injuries or maybe they can't exercise at all. That doesn't mean you can't do the program either with us or on your own, because really at the end of the day, it is the food exercise and movement is important for all kinds of reasons, brain health, bone health, immune function, improving self-esteem. But I, I want people to know that uh, I did not exercise at all when I started my permanent weight loss journey 13 years ago, I was in a wheelchair. I had a really bad uh, uh, injury from an accident. I was in a wheelchair for four months and I was still able to lose weight because it's the food. Like Dr. McDougall says, it's the food. It's always been the food. So that brings us to the sixth pillar, optimizing the diet. And we'll, we'll discuss things like, and I've seen a few people in the chat dealing with a weight loss plateau. We, we get a lot of, of questions about that and, and, and about when to eat, you know, using what things we've learned from the latest research on meal timing. And again, Really, at the end of the day, our, our advice is to eat when hungry, stop when full. However, one of the things we learned from so many of the doctors in the Truth About Weight Loss Summit is that, I mean, unless you're a shift worker and working the night shift, really nobody should be eating when it's dark, but eating at night. Our ancestors stopped eating when it was dark. And they didn't start again till it was light. And that is that is just the most conducive to weight loss. Some people do a thing called intermittent fasting, and there's different levels of it. There's 12-12, there's 8 I wouldn't go more than 8 16 a lot of people do 9.15. I think but the most important takeaway is just don't eat after dinner. So many people, Susanna, you probably you know, know this, eat more calories from after dinner to bedtime than they ate the whole day. And we want you to flip it. Do like the Seventh-day Adventist doctors teach us that are now, there's one of them that's 100 years old and he's going to be speaking at, at our, our potluck tomorrow. He's going to be filmed for a TED Talk on longevity. Breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, dinner like a pauper. If anything, you want more of your calories earlier in the day, not later in the day, which is the exact opposite of what most people do. So whether you eat, we don't recommend one meal a day, OMAD, Dr. Goldhammer is very much against that because he feels that's basically just like a binge. Most people need at least two meals to get enough calories. But if you do do two meals, the, the, the first meal should be bigger and the second meal should be smaller. But the most important thing is to stop eating after dinner. Try to have your dinner five o'clock, six o'clock at the latest. Have at least three hours between your last swallow of food and you go to bed. Don't be sitting on the couch, even if it's a healthy snack like air pop popcorn, which again, we can argue that may be healthy, but it's still calorically dense. It's a dried carbohydrate. It's 1800 calories a pound. Eat the corn on the cob, not the popcorn. If you could just learn to do that for, you know, again, you're not gonna be able to do everything that we recommend for permanent and sustainable healthy weight loss in 21 days. But even if you worked on one thing, whether it was getting more movement, the self-love, drinking more water, or just stopping, stopping to eat after dinner is huge. And I know that somebody that has had tummy trouble since pretty much the age of four, I, that is one of the, that it's, it's, just, it is better for your health. And again, what we keep saying is what is good for your health will support your weight loss. It's not an either or. Do you, do, you have, I, do you struggle with night eating? I, I sure did in the past. Um, and, you know, the thing was, I wasn't pounding back apples and carrots at nine o'clock at night. I was it was potato chips and dip or it was cheesies or, or you know, you name it. Um, the extra cake left over from dinner. Like it was always ultra processed food late at night. And and so even for me, just cutting that out made a huge difference. Um, and, you know, so I would really say that one of the keys for me was definitely eating to satiety at dinner, like making sure you've got your full complement of vegetables and then a nice big mound of wet, drippy starch, like Dr. Lyle says, and then maybe some fruit for dessert. Like I'm really full when I finish dinner. And, you know, I, again, had to white knuckle it to learn how to not eat at night and wait till breakfast, but I did it, you know, and it, it's a, it's a really good feeling to know that you can change a lifetime of habits. You know, it's interesting. I love that you said wet, steamy starch because that is different than crackers, than bread, than air pop popcorn, than rice cakes. And I really feel that the starch is going to be key to your 
permanent success in the weight loss space and also where it comes to satiety. And I'm going to use a real life example that happened just last night. Yesterday was my birthday and we had a game party slash potluck. And so I always make sure that I make something that I enjoy and that I can eat. And of course, it's my birthday. So I made myself a birthday cake. Well, what happened is one of my friends, Katie, bought, brought Tammy Kramer's cornbread muffins, which I, I can eat there. You know, I don't I, right now I can eat things that are maybe a little bit more processed, but they're delicious. There's no sugar, oil, salt. And there's just it's made with a few dates and it's made mostly with corn and oats. And then another friend uh, brought these uh, double stuffed potatoes, uh, russet potatoes like that had artichoke hearts and spinach and a little bit. The nutritional yeast and they were just creamy. And so I remember I, I, I didn't even eat what I made, which was my butternut bisque with wild rice with arugula, because, you know, it's fun to eat somebody else's stuff. So I had two muffins. I had the potato. I, I only had a half because she only brought 12 and there were 12 people. I mean, I would have had more. It was so delicious. And then another friend brought this beautiful chopped salad with fruit and balsamic vinegar. And then I put a little rice on it. And I mean, I was, I could not even eat dessert. I was so full because I feel like people that are always looking for snacks. I, Mary McDougall said this once um, when I interviewed her is, and it's not that um, you will lose your sweet tooth, but I feel like it will be dialed down because when you're truly getting enough satiating starch, you just aren't going to crave the sugar. And so I mean, there were, there was so much dessert yesterday and dessert that I could eat. Somebody brought a beautiful fruit salad. Somebody brought two, two kinds of grapes. I made my own birthday cake. There were, um, something else. Oh, somebody made these mousse things. I mean, I, I was, I was just stuffed because I ate enough starch. And so while we feel fruits and vegetables are important for so many reasons, you want to always have at least a 50 50 plate. You want the fruits and vegetables, but you've got to have starch. I always think about that song. You got to have starch, miles and miles of starch. No starch, no satiety. And so many people, when they learn calorie density, think they're going to like, like trick it by just doing fruits and vegetables. Nope. I mean, yeah, you'll lose weight, but it'll be a disaster because then you will end up in what Susanna talked about earlier, the binge restrict repeat cycle. You will not gain weight eating starch. I mean, you, your scale may go up at first if you've been on a calorie restricted weighing and measuring or keto or paleo diet, because now you'll have a few pounds more of glycogen in your muscles and livers. But if you're not adding, you know, cheese and oil and, and, uh, and like nut butter type sauces, you can eat all the starch you want. And without that, you're not going to be all satisfied. But we do teach you little tips and tricks like, like meal sequencing on how to still get ample amount of starch, but still getting enough calories from the, the greens so that you can, you know, kind of preload. So we'll, we'll go into all of this, but, but please, whatever you do, even if we never see each other again, heed my words, never skimp on starch. Yeah, yep. absolutely. All right. So I know you have a lot of questions. So if you would indulge me, I am just going to share a little bit more specifically about the program for those of you that are interested, because we only do this once a year. This is our most basic and beginning program. We call it the lose weight with a full plate 21 day program. Where are my slides? Are they coming up? Slides. Toby, if you're there. Hmm. Toby, if you're there, I don't know why my slides aren't coming up. It's like they've gone for good. It's like everything's gone for good. Okay, let's try again. Ah, there we go. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to just turn my camera off. You can turn yours off too, just for a second, Susanna. All right, so could this work for you? Well, we don't know unless we try. So we call this the lose weight with a full plate program, 21 days where, and I'm not kidding you, you can eat as much as you want when you want, but if the right, it has to be the right foods, which we're going to teach you what those are, give you plenty of recipes because we want you to enjoy your food and your life. And we want to make it easy. We want to take all the pressure off, which is why it's 21 days. This is just an experiment. If you are familiar with my story that I've outlined in the Truth About Weight Loss Summit in my book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, or in the lecture from Fat Vegan to Skinny Bitch, very briefly, I was obese since the age of five. In my 20s, here's me on The Tonight Show. You can find this on YouTube. I weighed 180 pounds. I'm only five feet five tall. I was 160 from the time I was 11. And now I'm in my 60s and I weigh 70 pounds less. I even trimmer than that picture. And I'm performing stand-up comedy when I can because that is really one of my passions in life. And that's one of the things we'll help you find is what you love outside of food. 
we want you to treat this as an experiment, but I believe if you're ready and if you're not, you're going to have to wait till next year because it's a once a year we do this program for an experiment that could quite possibly change your life. So it starts Monday, April 1st. <laughs> we waited till after Easter because we know everybody wants their last binge on C's Easter eggs, candies, and whatever else people eat for Easter. So we're starting on a Monday. That seems to psychologically work well for people. April 1st, yes, it's April Fool's Day, but we're not fooling with all you're going to get from this program. I remember once getting on a plane in Cleveland and the stewardess had been in the program and was telling everybody on Southwest Airlines about this program that we do once a year, lose weight with a full plate. And we're going to teach you in three weeks how to kickstart your permanent weight loss without feeling overwhelmed. And how do we do that? Because we have 21 daily step-by-step -step modules. And I went over the six pillars today and hopefully gave you some value to know what they are. Nutrition pillar, making food easy, cravings, mindset and self-love, social dynamics, and how to optimize your diet. And all these things we're going to teach you. Here's just some testimonials from people that took the program, like Brenda, her cravings for sweets diminished right at about the two-week point. Again, it's not overnight. Amy lost five pounds overall, and she talks about how doing some of these things that we taught helped her stick with this way of eating. So what you're going to get is 21 daily modules, which we value at $197, these recorded modules that each day you're going to get one first thing in the morning. But this is the, probably one of the most important things that we're going to give you because so many people can't do it alone. If you could have done it alone, you probably would have. But this is the private forum. Now, this is off of Facebook. We learned early on when we were doing programs, <laughs> even though there's people that absolutely adore social media, many don't or many have jobs where they can't even get access to them while they're at work. They don't even have accounts. So this is a private forum that's completely been upgraded with all these bells and whistles now that is so cool now with the way you can private message people, add photos. It's very, very cool. And we have three success coaches. These are people that have done the lose weight with a full plate method. Some of them have lost over 100 pounds. Some of them are even coaching people now. And they're basically, you know, not to disrespect them in any way, kind of mini me's and anything I know, they know. And also we're in touch all together. And so you can get real time answers and support from experienced coaches, connect with other people in your group, make friends for life as Susanna did in these programs. And again, it's off of Facebook, which is very nice. You're also going to get something really beneficial, which is the live group coaching. So for over three consecutive Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific time for at least two hours, we're going to do a Q&A with me and one of the coaches. Each week, we're going to have a different coach because I feel like my perspective can only be enhanced by someone else's, even though we have similar thoughts on most things. Of course, you get replays if you can't watch live. And of course, you can submit questions in advance if you can't be there. And I will tell you and I, that I've never not answered a question. And I, okay, hopefully this won't happen, but the record is four hours and 40 minutes. One year, we had just so many people in the program, not every week, but the first week, that's how long it took. That's how long it stayed. Did have to go to the bathroom in the middle though, but just know that you will be taken care of. So you're going to get the 21 daily modules worth $197, a private forum with three success coaches, which it's valued at 200, but I think it's more because I know what we pay them. Three live group sessions with myself and each one with a different coach. So right now the value is at almost 500. Oh, by the way, you're going to get all the recordings of previous Q and A's too. So this is an incredible bonus because we've been doing this course for five years now. You'll get food resources. So you're going to get the what we eat cheat sheet, the calorie density chart, and you're going to get some of the favorite recipes to get you started. And of course you can feel free to use your own or use no recipes and just batch cook and do the bowl method. This is pretty cool. I mean, for people that are really motivated, that like to learn, that like to listen, because, you know, repetition is the mother of skill. You get the Q&A recordings of every past program. So that's 30 hours if you really want to really immerse yourself in this. And, of course, you'll get the audio downloads of everything. 
So right now, with all that we're offering, we feel the total value is worth almost $600. But of course, that's not the price. You're going to just be floored. This is our least expensive of every program we do. You're going to get a daily motivational message from me at the end of the day, because some people do really well all day. And then nighttime comes and the snacks are calling them from the freezer, which hopefully you can get as many of those snacks out of the house. But you're going to get a daily motivational message. And then you'll get lifetime access to all the material. Just make sure you download it, okay? So here we have all the things you're going to get. Private forum, daily modules, the live coaching, all the pre-recorded modules, 30 hours or so. Daily motivational message, priceless lifetime access, total value $597. So my question is, would it be worth it if you could finally free yourself from cravings, food addiction, and yo-yo dieting, if that was all you could do? Or avoid the health complications that come with excess weight? Or leave the frustrations of weight loss behind and make new friends? along the way. If, if you did all of those or one of them or two of them or three of them, would that be worth it? So I could either go cheap and offer you a do-it-yourself program, but it wouldn't have the support. And so I couldn't be there to help you achieve the breakthrough you desire. Or I could create this program to kickstart your journey to permanent weight loss with all the support you need. So I when I, I don't do private consoles anymore, but when I did, it was $250 for a consultation. And you're getting six hours with me with that. But because you chose to invest some time today in your health, it's only $97. And that's like if you go out to dinner with two people, that's about what it costs now. And I can tell you that's true because we actually went out to dinner for my birthday the night before. And it was right about that before the tip. So if you click this link before, right below, you could see it. It's in blue. It's loseweightwithafullplate.com slash start. You can register today. And here's some more testimonials for people that were in the program. I feel wonderful. I don't feel like I'm missing out. I don't get those darn cravings. This is a good start. So happy I started this program. It's the first time I've been able to lose weight in years. I have a lot more energy and I haven't been feeling hungry. So you have two options. You can do nothing. Um, but, you know, they always say if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten and not take this leap of faith and, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Or you can join me for this 21 day experience and see if it works for you. There's a seven day money back guarantee. We can't make it a one month guarantee. It's a 21 day program. But if you really give it your best shot for seven days, so you'll have at least one of the coaching modules to see what miracles can happen and what knowledge you can glean. We feel that everybody can do something for at least a week. But if after a week, you're not completely satisfied with how you're feeling and the direction you're going, just send us an email within the first seven days and we will give you a full and a prompt refund. Absolutely no questions asked. So the program starts April 1st. That's about 10 days from now. It starts on a Monday. It starts after Easter. It's a great time to start the first of the month. Spring is all about renewal. And if you can see this, click the link, check it out. And that's all I've got to say. Other than if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. And now I will go on to answer as many questions as I see in the Q&A. Now, guys, if you put the questions in the um, in the chat, they uh, often disappear. So we're going to go to the Q&A. And Susanna, you can help me please answer these questions. Um, Andrea says, I'm traveling all of April. If I join, is everything recorded? Yes, you can access it in May. And I would also uh, say that if you have questions, just send them to the, us in advance for the live Q&As. Okay, when I go to the 21 day link, it won't let me sign up. So Toby, if you're here, maybe you can um, look at Tracy's question and see why she hasn't been able to sign up because Rita is saying the same thing. Oh, Terry's mentioning pixie sticks. That was like your your uh, your Kool-Aid. Uh, I used to eat sugar out of the jar when I was little. So it's interesting because some of you guys are putting chat questions in the, in the Q&A and vice versa. So that's okay, but we'll get to them either way if, as long as they're still there. I noticed some of the chat disappeared. I find... 
uh, Lynn says, at times when I'm not satisfied eating this way, I've been trying again and find that nuts are helping for satisfaction, but not helping for weight loss. Any suggest this, Susanna, I know you're going to know the answer to this because of what we learned from Dr. Lyle. Any suggestions? What's a substitute to help to lose weight and feel satisfied? I'm going to answer it and Susanna's going to answer it. So for one, if you're not full, there's two things. One, you, and again, when Lynn, if you take the course, what we can do in the coaching is I can bring you on and talk to you more specifically, because what I would ask you is to see your food diary or have you tell me what you're eating in a day. If you're not, there's a couple of reasons for not being satiated. One is you're just not eating enough food in terms of volume. You remember, you have not just calorie and nutrient receptors, you have stretch receptors. So one, you're not eating enough. Two, you are not eating enough starch because a lot of people are still afraid the potatoes, rice, and beans are going to make them fat. And uh, so those, those are the two first things that I would say. But also, you know, I'm not saying that this is you, but there, when people have cravings in, for high, higher fat foods, some of it can be emotional because fat is very sedating. So my recommendation, if you need something that's a little bit higher in fat, instead of going to nuts, which are 3,000 calories a pound, Think about going to tofu or tempeh because that has more fat. Think about it. Edamame is over 50% fat. It's 56% fat. So tofu and tempeh are a much higher fat food, but at a lower caloric density. And so that's what I would suggest, or maybe even a little bit of avocado because it still has the water like the tofu. So those are the three things I would suggest if for somebody not feeling satisfied. First, I would try to make sure that my volume is adequate, my starch is adequate. And then if it's not, if you're getting satisfaction for that little bit of nuts, think about trying to get it from tofu, tempeh, or avocado. What would you say, Susanna? That's exactly what I do. I, I do have tofu, tempeh, and not so much avocado, um, uh, just because I find they go bad so fast. So I, I get frustrated with the food waste. So, uh, so like if I'm at a restaurant and there's avocado on it, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, and then, yeah, I probably have tofu probably twice a week, tofu or tempeh twice a week now. And I would totally agree. Um, if you're not feeling satisfied, you're probably not eating enough starch. You know, um, Susanna Holt did some research on uh, the food satiety and the number one most, you can Google it on PubMed, um, the most satiating food on the planet is a potato. And so I need that. I need a high level of satiety to make this work for me. Um, yeah. So, so Lynn, if you do join, please bring this question back so that we can either see you visually or, or I'd like to know, and if there's time now, like what you are eating in a day, but it's a great question. And Nancy says, are grains included in the 21 days? If you like them, here's the thing, even though we feel that potato is the most satiating start based on the, the glycemic index from Dr. Susanna Holt, you eat whatever starts you want, eat a variety, any kind of bean, any kind of legume, any kind of whole grain any kind of sweet potato. There's 400 kinds of potatoes, for example, and um, butternut squash, kabocha squash, all the winter squashes are starch. Uh, parsnips are a starch, actually. So it's whatever starch you love. Okay. Um, what is healthy weight loss during this program? Well, it's slow because three weeks. Now, here's the thing. If you're somebody that's been eating a lot of salt, you might see a huge drop in your weight if you go low salt or salt free just from the the, uh, the extra water that you've been carrying. And so, you know, it, it just depends. Some people, it, it okay, so we used to run the program in my home when I lived in Sherman Oaks. And the most that anybody ever lost weight in my 30-day program was a guy that lost 27 pounds, a lady that lost 19 pounds, the least was three pounds. But of course, it really depends on a lot of things. How much weight do you have to lose? Dr. Lyle says that we only lose two ounces of fat a day. The more weight you have to lose, the more weight loss you're going to ex experience. But don't expect to lose 100 pounds in 21 days. It's not going to happen. You know, um, just this can be very discouraging for some people or encouraging for people that are willing to commit to doing something for their health long term. I was hypothyroid when I started my weight loss journey. I am on medication for it now, but at the time I wasn't for reasons that, that were too, too complicated to explain right now. But I was still able to lose weight slowly, but it took me 27 months to lose 47 pounds. Also, I was in a wheelchair, but that doesn't mean it's going to be that slow for you. But the thing is, is if you approach this just as something to lose weight, I don't think you're going to be successful long term because what we're teaching you is how to eat for life. You know, uh, and if you do that, weight loss will be a 
or result. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's your opinion on low FODMAP and gluten-free? So I think for, if somebody has GI issues and they were told by their a GI specific dietitian or GI doctor to do those things, I think they can be useful, but I don't think everyone has to do that. And our program um, is not low FODMAP <laughs> because without onion and garlic, it's really hard, in my opinion, to make things taste amazing. To me, every recipe starts with an onion. As far as gluten-free, I do recommend gluten-free for most people, not because I feel that gluten is inherently wrong, but for people that suffer from food addictions, there are two doctors that uh, I have interviewed, Dr. Joan Ifland, who wrote a book called Sugar and Flour, How They Make Us Crazy, Sick and Fat, and Dr. Erwin Linsner, a doctor at True North, that talk about the gluteomorphines in gluten. Uh, so even things that are healthy whole grains like farro or spelt or couscous for people that are food addicts, just the way that dairy turns to casomorphine in the brain, which is an opiate, gluten can do the same thing. So since there are so many wonderful gluten-free grains or, or pseudo grains like wild rice and quinoa and sorghum and teff and amaranth and oats and corn, uh, we do recommend it for people that are, are, are suffering with food addictions to consider gluten-free. Will I be able to do this if I have a tree nut allergy? Yes, I eat no nuts at all. So yes, you can absolutely, because we don't even recommend us in the program. Uh, we recommend for more people to try to do things like flax and chia seeds, but yes, you can. Who are the coaches, asked Colleen. Well, one of them, believe it or not, is the lovely Susanna. The other two coaches have worked with us for years in our programs. One is Zena, who has lost over 100 pounds, starting with Dr. McDougall's Maximum Weight Loss Program, which is basically another calorie density approach, which I recommend him and that book, of course, if you can take his program, but it's... Um, Let's see, it's like, uh, um, it's about 20 times more costly, but you'll get medical care, which will be amazing. And Pam Miller, who is another one of our success coaches who eats this way and has had her own journey with weight and food addiction. And she actually is a nurse practitioner. So, and they're, we're all together in, in a coaching program together too. So we're all friends in that way. Uh, I don't know why the um, the enrollment link isn't working, Kathy, and I'm really sorry. And Toby, if you're there and can hear me, um, I'm hoping he can fix that. Um, and Susan's saying the same thing. I don't know if I can. Hey, Charles. I, I see I have my husband to call Toby, but I'll need Susanna to talk for a minute while I do that. Uh, presentation. Hey, hey, Day. So for the link, um, I've tagged it on the top. So it's sticking on top of the chat. And I've also added it throughout the chat history. There was a short problem with the website indeed. So I've been pasting this direct checkout link and this should work for everybody. So have a look, the link is tagged and uh, sticks to the top of the chat. Yeah, thank you, Toby. Um, Beth says, what about using 100% ground cornmeal and plant milk for cornbread or muffins? That's what I do, um, but I did not eat. So, so okay, R realize I've been slim now for over 10 years. I did not eat muffins. I didn't eat baked goods while I was losing weight. That said, good, better, best. And if eating a cornmeal muffin like my recipe or Tammy Kramer's is going to keep you from going to Cinnabon or Dunkin' Donuts, do it. But realize that when you have a grain, even a healthy whole grain like oats or cornmeal, and you're baking it into a muffin, you have a dried carbohydrate that instead of being 500 calories per pound is now 1800 calories per pound. So they're not as favorable for weight loss, but that doesn't mean that there are no or a no forever. It depends on your unique and individual goals and where you're starting from. Uh, okay. Oh, this is so nice. L Lorraine says, Susanna's story brought tears to my eyes. I can relate to so many of her struggles. Will she be one of the coaches? Yes, she will. That's why we wanted you to meet her. Trisha, there will be a replay, but this replay will not be forever. So we'll have, we'll, I don't know exactly how many days Toby will keep it up or maybe even allow me temporarily to put it on my YouTube channel, but it's not going to be forever. So yes. And so if it's starting and stopping, I'm thinking that might be your internet, the person that asked that. How do you deal with excess gas from eating beans and legumes? And she loves the webinar, says Annette. <laughs> There's a couple of ways. So just so you know, I eat no beans. I have not. Well, I did an experiment last year to try to reintroduce them, but I am truly allergic to them. I eat no beans um, and I love beans and I miss them. 
but you don't have to have beans. So there's a couple of things. If you have a lot of gas from beans, it could be if you're not used to eating beans, your microbiome is adjusting and you have to do what Dr. Will B and even Dr. Furman says, go low and slow. So you don't start by eating a cup full of beans. Dr. Furman even recommends in some people eating one bean a meal until you can build up that favorable gut bacteria. But know that you don't have to eat beans. They're very healthy, but you can eat all the other starches. So, yep. We actually did a summit once called the GI Health Summit, and that was uh, one of the things we learned. Uh, do bloating and gas go away after you get used to it? It's going to depend. If you're having bloating, that is your gut microbiome, and you may have to actually see a a doctor, a GI doctor. There are many, many plant-based GI doctors now, many who do consultations both in person and online, depending on when you, where you live. But if, it, it, see, I don't know what you've been eating before, but if you've been eating a lot of animal products and processed food, your gut, gut microbiome has created bacteria that are because of those foods. And it almost like your, your microbiome becomes addicted to those foods. So when you change it, it's kind of like mutiny in the gut microbiome. So the thing is, it can take more than 21 days for that kind of thing to adjust. That's why a lot of people go to the True North Health Center, do a water fast, and they, they kind of reset their microbiome. So the thing is, is what you can do is Google this. <laughs> Every type of fruit and vegetable has a different degree of of gassiness that it causes. And so if you Google least producing vegetables or least producing gas in vegetables, you'll get a list in order. And that's why we often recommend starting with zucchini. Zucchini is technically a fruit. I don't know anybody that's bloated from zucchini. If you do go see a doctor, because that is one of the most neutral things that they give. I mean, after a water fast, it's like the first thing you get is steamed zucchini. It's like literally mostly water. So definitely Google that, Laura, and, and get that list up, you know? Um, there will be a replay, Cleo. Um, okay, a type. Okay, type two diabetes. My husband was just diagnosed. What do we do? Um, okay, so um, there's a couple of things I would recommend. There's some very wonderful books out there specifically on type two diabetes. There's Reversing Diabetes, I believe is the name by Dr. Neil Barnard. There is one by Dr. Furman about diabetes. But really, you can just go to my YouTube channel for free. Put in Dr. John McDougall diabetes, watch that talk. I mean, it, you know, if you have the money and the time, it's not going to be for two months. Take the McDougall program. Mastering diabetes is a wonderful program. It's much more uh, uh, costly than the one that I'm offering, but those are all, all great resources. But basically just put in YouTube or Google, you know, diabetes. And then one of the doctors I mentioned, Dr. John McDougall, Dr. Neil Barnard, watch their presentations because diabetes is not caused by carbs. It's actually caused by fat. Why do I recommend no dairy? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, dairy actually is very addictive. And one of the things that I teach in addition to weight loss is helping people manage food addictions. And even the people in the food addiction space that are not uh, uh, plant-based, like Dr. Joan Iflin <laughs> talks about avoiding dairy. There's some wonderful books about that from Dr. Neil Barnard. One is called um, The Cheese Trap. I'm trying to think of the other name. It has to do with hormones. But... but you, okay, so we weren't really designed to drink milk of another species. We're only supposed to drink milk from the, our, our mother. And so when you have milk, there is a compound in it in, in dairy, in breast milk of every species uh, called casomorphine. Casein is the dairy protein, morphine meaning an opiate like compound. And the reason it was put there by nature or God, however you believe we got here, is that the baby would nurse and then it would be like a mild opiate for the baby to stay near the mother because we didn't always have the security of houses and, you know, animals. It's dangerous if little animals go away. And so we were never meant to concentrate or drink the milk or eat the mil milk pro products made from milk of another species. And so what happens is these casomorphines, when you make yogurt and cheese and ice cream, they're even more concentrated than in the breast milk. And so it creates this opiate-like effect, which is why it's so addictive, which is why people have a hard time giving up dairy, why Howard Lyman, the mad cowboy, said it was harder for him to quit smoking than it was to quit uh, to quit cheese than it was to quit cigarettes. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of research from Dr. Colin Campbell in the China study about the deleterious effects of dairy products, which if you're interested, you can read, but mostly from a food addiction standpoint and a weight loss standpoint, because dairy products range about 1600 calories per pound. Okay. Uh, thank you for the birthday wishes, everyone. Uh, I don't understand the 50-50 plate. Are you saying eat veggies for breakfast? Is it veggie with starch? So there's a couple ways to go about it. So 
for people that can just eat some vegetables by themselves. And there's many ways you can flavor them with onion and garlic sauteing and balsamic vinegar. I often recommend that people do that first. And then when hunger reoccurs, which could be in 20 minutes or two hours, then have the 50, 50 plate of starch and vegetables. If that sounds too, uh, too difficult for you, 50, 50 plate. And it, it's not weighing and measuring. It's just visually so that you know that every plate of food you eat, even if you eat, um, you know, first, if you go back for seconds or thirds, that half the plate is fruits and vegetables or, or vegetables or, or fruit and vegetables and starch. So it's, it's going to be up to you how you do that. How much protein do you eat per meal? So Debbie, one of the things that I feel that's nice about my program and like Dr. McDougall's and you don't, we don't count anything really. And other than our blessings and we, we don't worry about it because if you're eating enough calories, you're going to get enough protein. There's really never been a case of what's called Kwakiarshar protein deficiency, unless a person is calorie deficient. And there's actually more protein per calorie in things like broccoli than even in steak. You know, I think steak has something like 5.2 uh, grams of protein for 100 calories, broccoli 11.4. So we don't count that. So as long as you're eating, I, I mean, unless you were like, I guess, hypothetically, if all you ate was fruit, maybe you wouldn't get enough protein. But if you're eating vegetables and starch, you are going to be okay. If I don't eat anything after five, I wake up at midnight or two, eight, I'm hungry and go back to sleep. Okay. Well, Rita, how much are you eating? Because are you eating enough during the day and at your last meal? So um, when you say you don't eat anything after five, what are you eating after five and what time, you know? So that that's something we can work with you on a little later. Terry says, is tofu okay? Yeah. So we mentioned um, tofu is not, not okay. But realize that in the legume family, the edamame is the highest fat bean. So it's going to have higher fat. So I wouldn't recommend having it in every single meal, every single day. But as we talked about in an earlier uh, question, that can be something nice. I'm personally allergic to soy, so I, I do not eat it. And smoothies, again, and, and the thing about okay, the word okay, when you say okay, what do you mean? Okay for health, okay for weight loss, because smoothies and tofu are perfectly okay for health. They may not be as favorable for you as weight loss, because anytime you blend the food, you are going to have more food. So if you were to take everything in your smoothie and put it in a bowl, I guarantee it's going to be a lot more difficult to eat than, than if you blended it because when you blend it you reduce the volume and you make it easier to over consume so i don't recommend any liquid calories whether they're designer coffee drinks smoothies uh, alcohol for weight loss so it's better to eat the contents of the blender than to to juice or to make smoothies um no the starch is so colleen because i'm not a doctor i don't want to speak as a doctor i'd rather refer you to one of the many videos which if i had time and if if, if, if susanna could take a question i can look for it but any of the videos that don jock or john mcdougall or dr neil barnard has given on diabetes because you or, or reading the book mastering diabetes both the gentlemen that wrote this new york times best-selling book are diabetic and that's all they eat is carbs and mostly fruit um what are the six levels I, I i think maybe you mean the six pillars and they are nutrition making the food easy social dynamics cravings mindset and self-love and diet optimization and uh, <laughs> um your son. Okay. You know, um, I, 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 I don't know how you can know that you get enough protein unless maybe you go to the doctor and get a blood test. They can test your protein levels. But like I said, it's, it, there's a wonderful book called Proteinaholic by Dr. Garth Davis and Dr. Howard Jacobson. Most people don't struggle with getting enough protein. They struggle with getting too much protein. And so, you know, it's the other things that are the problem is that you're getting too much fat and you're getting too much and not, not you necessarily, Rebecca, but most people. So I don't think that the struggle with the protein is actually real. You want to just get enough calories and you will get enough protein. Uh, Mary Lee says, I've been whole food plant-based since 1-1-24. One, one, I've lost 13 pounds. That's wonderful. I'm wondering if I would lose faster as if SOS free. I'm trying. What I'm surprised about my recent blood work shows high glucose. So um, the thing is, is I don't know what you're eating right now. And I don't know how much of it is, is coming from SOS. For the SOS free, I think the only important thing for people in general for health and weight loss is the oil. Not, not to say that you should be pouring loads of sugar and salt on your food. Um, Dr. McDougall suggests those as condiments that the tip of the tongue can taste. But I, you know, again, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know if you should be concerned. And a lot of times blood tests have to be repeated. Sometimes they're wrong. I mean, sometimes the labs 
they're wrong. And I, you know, I've, I've, I had that. I mean, <laughs> this is a very funny thing. I, I, okay. I, I haven't eaten any fat practically in 12 years. And I got this thing that I have fatty liver. Okay. I don't, but sometimes the labs mess up. Sometimes the blood sits out longer. So I always tell people, if you've got a, a result you're concerned with, repeat it. You know, what did you eat that morning, for example? So, so I wouldn't necessarily worry about it right now, but all the plant-based doctors that have been in the summit, almost all of them either still see patients in person or online. Yeah. If you live in Spain or wherever you live, Amanda, it is definitely recorded. Uh, Alice says, I love your program. I'm looking for a French speaking equivalent. Hmm. Um, okay. Quand j'avais 11 ans, j'habitais avec ma tante. Elle est suisse, alors j'apprends la langue. Mais maintenant, um, parce qu'il n'y a pas de personne de um, parler avec, j'ai oublié beaucoup de la langue. That's the best I can do. Um, so I, I just, I'm not fluent in it anymore. I was, I was raised speaking French. Um, looking for to share. Okay, who, who do we know in the plant-based space that speaks French? This is something I got. I'm going to write myself a note. There's got to be somebody. I don't know if there's doctors. I'm writing myself a note because it's a beautiful language. My favorite films are French. Uh, okay. Barbara, I'm doing good on my own, but I would love to do this program. I'm going on vacation on the 15th. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming the 15th of April. So you've already got two weeks and one day under your belt. Yes. It's, I mean, if you have a device and it doesn't have to be a computer or a laptop, I'm assuming you might have a phone, you'll be able to listen. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Cheryl says, is this different than the better life summits? So if you bought the summit, it was $97 for two people. Um, th that was the access, the whole summit. And that is different because these are recordings of a summit. This is a step-by-step -step program where we hold your hand. We hold your hand. We give you daily support, daily modules and in weekly interaction. So yes, it's, it's different. What do you do for breath mints? Um, I don't have bad breath, so I, I, I mean, I brush my teeth. Um, uh, chewing on parsley can be very good. Uh, so I, I, do, you, do you use breath mints, Suzanne? I've never mm -hmm. needed I've heard of um, chewing on fennel seeds. Mm. That's another thing I've heard of, too. Yes, I, we have Indian neighbors that actually do that. I don't know why you keep losing sound, Becky, um, but we haven't heard that from most people watching. Uh, Kathy says, I have increased insomnia and pain with legumes and any grain. So I don't know why that is. Um, you might need some kind of like allergy testing or food sensitivity testing. You could do on his website for free. Dr. McDougall has an elimination diet. Um, this is one thing that they really are good at diagnosing at True North if you can ever get that. But the thing is, is the nice thing is, is, you know, you don't have to eat grains and legumes. If I mean, if you enjoy them, you should. But Dr. McDougall talks about how you can live on sweet potatoes or potatoes and broccoli. Grains and legumes are, are actually lack vitamin A and C, but you could actually live on potatoes. Not that you should, but people have done that. Um, yes. So, uh, Colleen, the replay will be available for anyone that registered for a limited time. They could watch that. Any trip trips, tips, Adriana says tips for traveling in Japan. I actually went to Japan and there was lots of rice and veggies there. Um, I, you know, I haven't been there for a long time. Susanna, have, has Asia been one of the countries you've traveled at? No, I never have. But you know what you said to me when I went to Prague, you said, but don't they have grocery stores there? It was kind of a rhetorical question <laughs> because yes, everywhere will have grocery stores. They'll have a produce department. Um, and yeah, the rice is just super simple too, right? Thanks. And um, so uh, congratulations, uh, Becky's been able to enroll. Welcome. You know, it starts right when you enroll, at least psychologically. Uh, Liz says, I crave salty, crunchy things. What can I eat? Well, crunchy is easy. Crunchy is so, so easy. Sugar snap peas, jicama. You know, here's the thing with salt. You can often use things that are like balsamic vinegars, lemon juice, lime juice, because your taste buds for salt sits right next to your taste buds for what is it, Susanna? My brain is fading. Now it tastes for salt. Sour? Sour. Thank you. Duh. Okay. And too much birthday partying yesterday. And so you can do that, for example. But crunchy is super easy because crunchy can be obtained from an air fryer by taking things. Yeah, we don't want to obtain our crunch for crackers and, and, and cereals because those are going to be dry carbohydrates at 1,800 calories per pound. But you can make air fries. All kinds of sugar snap peas are a favorite among people. Red bell pepper. And with the salt, 
you know, there are so many wonderful salt-free seasonings now that it's just, it's overwhelming how local spicery since we met him is making a bacon seasoning. And this is all salt-free, a barbecue seasoning, a pepperoni seasoning, a salacious. I mean, there's just wonderful, wonderful products out there. Benson's Table Tasty, where you really don't miss the salt. Um, and we get a shopping list before the start date. Toby, if you're here, I don't remember the order of when things are delivered. So Anne, Jerry Ann, that is, uh, if Toby is hearing this, he's going to either type in the chat or remind me of that. And somebody had mentioned about bread and how do they get that, that, that feeling of bread without bread. And so there's a couple of things, you know, uh, bread is generally a vehicle for other things that often are less healthy, you know, like butter and, uh, you know, cream cheese, you know, on a bagel, for example, or peanut butter. And so, there's a couple of things I've done that give me that feeling of bread that people like without the caloric density. And so one of the things I did early on is to make what I call potato waffles. And this is a very easy recipe. If you have a waffle maker, you basically microwave Yukon gold potatoes that are about the right size that each one would fit in your nonstick waffle iron. And then you chill them and then you smash them and you can actually use them as buns. Or if you don't have a waffle iron, you could cut them in half and toast them. You smash them. And, and that can be used as bun for your veggie burger. So, and it does have like that mouthfeel. And in many stores, or at least the stores by me, which are things like Sprouts and Whole Foods, they sell uh, sweet potato toast, which are just very thinly sliced, large orange sweet potatoes that you can actually toast and put stuff on. So those are, those are bread like things. For those people that have food dehydrators, you can make like raw, low fat vegan wraps like that Lissa Maris teaches and have that bread feeling still at a low fat, low caloric density. Okay, so hopefully Jerry Ann will get that answer for you about the shopping list. I, I, I'm guessing it comes before because it wouldn't make sense to come after. What is tempeh? What is it? Okay, this is for you from Jane, Susanna, because I'm allergic to it. What is tempeh? What does it taste like? How do you use it? Um, it comes in a block and it's kind of like pressed soybeans, like they're pressed together. And so... You just, un I get it at the health food store and you just um, un peel open the package and I slice, uh, slice it into cubes, about one inch cubes. And then I steam it first, which takes away the bitterness. So I just put it on like a, a steamer for 10, 10 minutes and then cook it up with whatever kind of sauce, um, you know, so something like a coconut amino or something, which is like a soy sauce substitute, which is lower in salt even than low salt soy sauce. Um, uh, any kind of the dressings that you make can go with over that, over rice. Um, I marinate it for a couple minutes. It doesn't take very long. And it's sort of, because it's soybeans, similarly to tofu, it takes on the flavor of whatever sauce you put it with. Um, and it's quite, quite nice. I like it. It's very neutral. And you know, I haven't, I haven't tried this yet, but I hear for people that are allergic to soy like me, there is a hemp foo and a pump foo. So it's basically tofu made out of hemp seed and, and pumpkin seeds, and maybe they have tempeh made out of other things. So I, I'm, I'm just so satisfied with what I eat. I haven't felt really the need to add anything like that, but they're, they, you, you want the variety. And that's why we have the coaches experience here too, because, you know, don't just do what I do because what I do works for me. And Toby, if you're there, um, Kathleen is asking, is it possible to get a list of foods needed before we begin the weekend so we can hit the ground? Yes. So we're going to have a list of recipes and suggestions and those, this is my toddler speaking. <laughs> and those are going to be available the moment you sign up. You're going to have a link to register for the forum. There's a resource section. And in the resource section, there's going to be the recipes of what we eat cheat sheet, which is also going to be super handy, the calorie density chart of Chef AJ. So there's going to be resources to prepare. And of course, you can connect with everybody ahead of time as well. Thank you, Toby. And LeMay, I did answer your question a few times in other questions. How do we get protein in? Beans, quinoa fruits, vegetables, all plant foods have protein. The largest animals on the planet are herbivores, the rhinoceros, the hippopotamus, the elephant, the giraffe. You get protein from eating plants and you get it in a better and more utilizable and less dangerous form than when you eat animal products. I promise that's never, I've never met anybody that was protein deficient unless they had some kind of an eating disorder or were not eating in other calories, like in a child abuse case. But if you're worried about it, the foods that have the mo more protein are things like beans, the legumes, and also things like quinoa. So Debbie says, 
I can't eat soy or gluten. Is this going to be too hard for me? I don't eat those things and I don't find it hard. And I also don't eat um, legumes and I'm still able to eat a wide variety of delicious food. Okay. Uh, I'm type two. Can I eat the carbs and the fruit? Okay. Again, we're not medical doctors, but we would like to, you to at least look at something that one of the plant-based medical doctors has done. If you can't read their book, at least a quick YouTube video, uh, Dr. Neil Barnard, Dr. John McDougall, even Cyrus Kambata, who is diabetic and all he eats is carbs so that you can understand that diabetes, not type one, that's different. It's not caused by this, but type two diabetes is caused by the fat not by the carbohydrates. And yes, you can eat carbs. However, you you also should work with a doctor, especially if you're on medication. And no, for people that are, are diabetic, you know, you don't want to just sit there and eat a, a plate of white potatoes or a plate of white rice. With diabetics, maximizing things like the beans, which have the second meal effect and resistant starch and beans with greens, but you absolutely can. And that's how you'll reverse it, believe it or not. Um, something about saggy arms. Um, I... Okay. Uh, uh, um, well, I, I usually, I don't, I mean, I, I, ha I have like skin that there should be a tricep there. So I guess I do in a way. Um, and I really need to do resistance training, which I don't, I actually have um, a lot of, you know, I don't walk around in a bikini because number one, it's cold here. And number two, when I do wear a swimsuit, I've always been more comfortable in a one piece, but when I do yoga and I'm doing a plank, I have this thing and that's my skin. And I, it doesn't bother me because I'm much more comfortable in a body with loose skin than I am at a body that weighed 180 pounds. So there is skin surgery. I, I'm afraid of every surgery. I still have anesthesia when I get my teeth clean. I have friends and clients that have had it and they are happy they did, but it's very painful. So um, I, I, I mean, it, it, it's so interesting to me that that's the reason people don't do this because they don't want to have saggy skin. If you feel you look better with the excess weight, please, uh, as long as you have, have health, that I, you don't have to be slim for me. But I much prefer, you know, the wrinkles that I now have that are, you know, my, my I'll tell you something. My mother was morbidly obese, as was my grandmother. They never wore makeup except for red lipstick. They never went into the sun and they died with the most beautiful skin like a baby's bottom. And because they were so obese, they didn't have a single wrinkle. And I do, and I've never had work. And I'd rather have that and the loose skin than be 180 pounds again. But again, you're the one that has to live in your body. And so um, if uh, we have had people in the program that were lifelong exercisers that did not have the loose skin, but I mean, think about it. If you had, if I, I had 70 pounds more, the skin doesn't just bounce back. So anyway, okay. Do you have loose skin, Susanna? I do. I do. And I'll take it any day <laughs> over, over the weight because I feel so much better. So, and like, I feel like I look better too, in spite of having the loose skin. Yeah. Well, I think you look great. There's a question and we can both answer this and um, what do we drink? So this is early more, or it started early morning for me. So the, I, I, I have to have purple. I can't enjoy anything if it's not purple. So the first thing I drink is my pot liquor. And what pot liquor is, is basically vegetable broth from the leftover greens that I steam that my husband, who's slender, always has for breakfast. This just happens to be 27 ounces. It's just it's um it you can put hot in that so that's the first thing i drink and uh then i drink i don't know this is a little bit more and this is just plain water and so that's all i drink is water oh occasionally i'll have a green juice but really just water um um sometimes hot tea but but mostly i'm a water drinker what about you susanna yeah, i drink water a lot uh and then the only other thing i drink is um a lot of herbal tea. <laughs> I love tea. And so I probably have at least three or four cups of tea a day. And so that was a big change for me because I was drinking full on caffeinated tea. And um, that was something that was very hard for me to give up. And it, it was a real transitional process with uh, lots of tries and fails. But I got there eventually and actually I sleep so much better. I used to be addicted to melatonin to sleep. I would take two or three tablets of melatonin at bedtime and then would have to drink 
a big pot of caffeinated tea in the morning just to get myself going. And I used to sleep poorly. I thought it was my age because all my friends in their fifties and going through menopause and stuff, sleep is like the number one topic. I don't have a sleep problem anymore. <laughs> I'm so glad to have that behind me because I would be awake in the middle of the night. I would wake up in the morning tired, drink the pot of tea, need the melatonin to go to sleep and just repeat. It was a repeating cycle. Yeah. So we have a question about is pea protein breakfast smoothie with fresh fruit off limits? Again, it, you know, nothing is off limits. The thing is, is we ask if possible, because this is a very, very short program. We do programs that last a lot longer, three months, four months, it's 21 days that we feel that you'll get the best benefit if you do the program as we designed it, rather than your own interpretation of it. And the thing is, is a fruit smoothie and pea protein, well, pea protein, first of all, is processed. We'd rather have you eat peas than eat the, a processed food. And usually protein powders have a lot of stuff in there, fillers, stevia, and things like that. And we want you to eat your food, not drink your food. So, I mean, you, you can try it your way, but my recommendation, especially if you're paying us, is to maybe consider our expertise and our years of experience and the combined weight loss that myself and the coaches have used to just, you know, try something a little bit different. Because if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got it. Um, can we still... Will this allow me to access my truth about weight loss for 2021? This actually won't, but if you don't have it in your Better Life Summits account, you'll just please email hello at betterlifesummits.com and they can help you with customer service for another product that you might have bought. Melanie says, what are your go-to meals for weeknights? Well, both Suzanne and I can answer this based on our experience. So one of the things we'll teach you in the program is, well, we all have different systems and methods for batch cooking. So I kind of, some people might think it's a, a rut, but I'm kind of in a routine because I'm super, super busy because in addition to working full time, I'm pretty much going to school full time right now too. So I have got to batch cook. So I make my favorite recipes and they're always available either in the fridge or the freezer. So like Tuesday is always tostadas, for example. Thursday is always stir fry, oil free, of course. Um, now I'm doing a lot of uh, deconstructed sushi bowls one night a week. I've always got my smoky sweet potato burgers in the freezer. That's one night a week. Always have a soup in the freezer, which is either uh, right now it's smoky butternut bisque, which I'll serve over a grain, or it will be the cauliflower bisque. And, and so, that's it's I just kind of pull from that and the thing is is like it, if my husband would let me I mean he won't let me I mean obviously I could like not say you can't do it but like the deconstructed sushi bowl like I would eat that every night every meal but I know man cannot live on or woman cannot live on white rice alone but like that is my favorite thing or even just you know I, I have this, I've had the same lunch every day for 12 years a huge hand of yam with broccoli so it you know I, I feel like Unless you're a person, and I've never met the person that eats three different, 30 different breakfasts, 30 different lunches, and 30 different dinners, find the five to seven recipes you love and repeat them for yourself and your family. And I'd love to know what yours are, Susanna. Well, we've got, uh, you know, on a busy night, I'll definitely do like what I showed in my slideshow, like the uh, like a bowl type of thing where I'm just throwing in a box of salad greens, um, some a grain like some rice or quinoa and some beans like or lentils. Uh, that's like my easy, quick go to night. And then some of the favorites. And, you know, I've been working all this time to slowly convert my family to eating this way. And, and literally in the last two weeks, I've had some initial success. So it just goes to show you, it doesn't, it's not an overnight thing. Um, and so, you know, from time to time, they've been serving them like sort of some of my meals and then, um, you know, back to their regular stuff. And, and I've been like, I made a chili and a big slow cooker chili, no meat in it. And it just used, um, soy curls and everybody loved it. Uh, another night I did a, a taco night, but I did, um, like, a uh, lentils done with taco seasoning and everybody liked it. And then there's several soups that everybody will eat. So, so that's, those are some of our favorites. Yeah. We're, we're, I'm blessed now where I live. There's restaurants that are not only vegan, but SOS free. And so not that I do this a lot, but I could go out to a restaurant once a week, which is something I never did while I was losing weight. 
Um, okay. People in the other chat are asking about if they're on medication for diabetes. And I apologize. I can't look at the chat and the Q and A at the same time, but what I was trying to do is throughout the webinar type in the chat that you could see it, that when you post in the chat, the chat disappears. When you post in the Q and A, it stays until it's answered. But if they're on medication, they have to have the approval or the support during the process of their doctor because dietary changes are powerful. And that's why when people take like the, the McDougal program or the go to True North, they, they sometimes have to be either having their medication reduced or eliminated right away. Uh, but if you're not on any medication, you should probably be able to take this safely. Uh, Sal Sally says, I'm based in the UK and have joined up, but I but can I still join your group sessions? Yes, and welcome and congratulations. So my understanding is I believe you're nine hours later. So by doing the program at 10 o'clock, that should be seven to nine your time. You know, we've, we've tried to do programs at different times and, and we do because we understand that in Asia and Australia, uh, but we find that this is generally a good time for a lot of people by doing it 10 in the morning. We've done two o'clock programs and even four. So uh, we, we try to get the most time zones available. I know sometimes we miss Israel and things, but we, Israel wouldn't do it anyway on a Saturday. So, you know, we, we, we do vary that. So of course, um, I can't recommend a certain amount of protein per day. I just recommend eating enough plant foods and you will get enough protein. Uh, okay. Have, how, have people gained weight during the 21 days? If they have, they haven't told me. But remember, their scale might have gone up at first because if they were on a keto, a paleo diet, a low-carb diet, or a weighing and measuring program, they start eating carbs again and four pounds immediately of water and glycogen. But again, not fat. I love bread, any good bread that tastes good. So there are a lot of breads that taste good. The thing is, is there are going to be calorically dense. Remember I mentioned grains are 500 calories per pound. Bread is 1600 calories per pound. <laughs> so there are breads you can make yourself or bread like things you can make yourself like quinoa and water. But remember anything that's beaded, heated, treated, dried, baked is going to be much more calorically dense. And so if you can find a substitute for the bread, like a nori wrap or a vegetable wrap, it's going to be a lot easier to lose weight. Bread is very, very, very calorically dense. If somebody said, well, if you have to eat bread, my recommendation is to eat the pacha bread, which is just buckwheat and water and eat as few of it as you can. But uh, bread is calorically dense. Okay. What does one drink in this lifestyle? What every animal in nature throughout human history drinks. Breast milk as a child, water as an adult. If you need to have a little tea, like Susanna said, or broth, but those are the best things to drink. We don't want to get our calories from liquids. And we don't want to get it from rooibos tea. Remember that, Susanna, a friend of mine, <laughs> the long-term vegan liver failure, just from rooibos tea. There's a video on that if you need that. Um, okay. I'm a volume eater. I need to eat one cup of dry rice and one pound vegetables. I'm not overweight, but want to be better. Well, what do you mean you want to be better? Because um, one cup of dry rice, I believe, yields, I mean, is that like three cups of cooked rice? That, doesn't, that sounds like fine. I mean, I would eat that. Um, could, I, you need to be more specific. You need to be better at what? Because, I mean, hey, people uh, from Asia until they started eating like us were the most lean people with only a 3% obesity rate. And their diet was white rice, vegetables. They even ate a little bit of animal products and oil. Any concern about organic soy milk? Um, not, not for me. I know that soy milk is much more calorically dense than the other milks and much higher in fat. But if you're just using a splash in your tea, what kind of plant milk do you use, Susanna? Uh, mostly soy milk. We use Eden soy, which is just soybeans and water. Um, and I, I do try to make my own. So I keep, I keep, uh, boxes of, of soy milk and almond milk in the cupboard with just one ingredient plus water. And then when, when I'm not as busy, then I make my own almond milk. Thank you. Uh, please talk about B12. My daughter had serious problems without it. Well, we totally, while we are not doctors or dietitians and can't prescribe, we recommend for anybody following a plant-based diet or really anybody because there's just as much B12 deficiency among people that are carnivores. Everyone take a good quality B12 supplement. Yeah. Um, I would sign up except that we're leaving on vacation for three weeks tomorrow. Plus, I only have 10 pounds to lose. I can do this based on what you said. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Have a great trip. Where are you going? All right. Uh, yeah. What if you're diabetic? So we're getting that quite a bit. And um, 
if you're diabetic, Without medication, you should not have any trouble. If you're di well, if you're diabetic with medication, you need to get the approval of your doctor and work with your doctor because your medication will probably need to be adjusted. And I really do recommend you get a little bit more education if you are not familiar how a plant-based diet can reverse diabetes, either with the book Reversing Diabetes by Dr. Neil Barnard or just going to YouTube or going to Dr. McDougall's website, reading some of his articles, watching some of his videos about how he routinely for 50 years reverses type two, not type one, diabetes with a high starch, oil-free plant exclusive diet. And type one diabetics, you're never gonna go up. I mean, I wanna say never, cause I, I mean, miracles maybe can happen. I've heard of one person that did in my life. Uh, he did a documentary. You are, you, you will still need to stay on, on, on insulin. The best resource I know for type one diabetics is Dr. Cyrus Kambata and Robbie Barbero, uh, the co-founders of Mastering Diabetes. They both are type one diabetics and they eat nothing but carbs. And you can, you know, find them free on YouTube or Instagram. Are soy corals processed? Uh, being allergic to soy, I don't know. So Susanna, you tell me. Yeah, they. Um, from my understanding is it's just cooked soybeans that are then uh, cooked down into a mush and then extruded through a machine to give them their shape and dried. So it, for me, they work. And yeah. it's a really nice transitional food for my kids because it has like a kind of meat like texture when you rehydrate it it's a little bit chewy and so for my teens and young adults it's kind of a good transitional food that's why i use them i wish somebody would make soy curls without soys because they sound really really fun um uh, do i have to sign up today toby if you want to answer that i i think the offer i mean toby how much in the future can people sign up if you get yeah that? so the program starts april 1st and that is the last day of registration. So uh, that is going to be right after Easter. We wanted to give people the time to go through the Easter holidays and then still join. But of course, the earlier you, you join, you're actually going to get the resources and you get to connect in the forum ahead of time. Oh, so yeah. the earlier you join, the more you're going to be connected with the community of the better. I forgot about that. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, oh, uh, Evelyn says, how would a spouse team purchase the 21 day program? I mean, if you guys live in the same house, just one of you buy it. I don't need double money from a, people in the same household. So I would, I mean, if you, but I'm guessing if, oh, that's a great question. Because how would they both be in the forum? I'm going to ask mm -hmm. Toby about that. That, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. We're going to, hopefully Toby will get, come back to us. What about your whole grain muffins with whole oats and bananas? Okay. So again, Jerry and the baked, baked goods are not. I, I think about things as good, better, best. And one of the reasons I've always created delicious desserts, and my next book is Desserts Only, is because I find that um, without them, very few people are perfect. And something is, at some point, somebody's going to have a snack accident or for whatever reason, want to have something because it was their birthday. And by giving people these recipes, they're still healthier for everyone, whether they want to lose weight or not, than for somebody going to the Cheesecake Factory. But, and it depends how, mi how much of it do you eat, just like bread. It's, it, it's, it's generally not favorable for weight loss. It's not something I included at the start of my journey. But if you're going to go off plan and go to Cinnabon, which is like 1100 calories and 60 grams of fat, I'd much rather have you make one of my muffins. So they're okay in terms of health, but they're not as favorable for weight loss as eating, you know, vegetables, fruit, and starch. Yeah. So again, the, the, all the diabetics, pre-diabetic and insulin resistance is different than somebody on diabetes medication because they're type one or type two. Those people definitely need to work with their doctors because dietary change is powerful. But if you're pre-diabetic, this is what can reverse it and keep you from going on medications. But it's still good to have a doctor's uh, opinion. Well, not a doctor like a regular doctor, like a plant-based doctor. And there's so many now that do telehealth from all the doctors at True North. And I mean, those resources we can give you to, to get a consultation, to know that you're doing the right thing. Um, and uh, Rochelle appreciates you, Susanna. If you join the day program and have to miss a live, yes, everything is recorded. Everything is recorded. So even the person that's going on vacation for three weeks, she could still join because it's all recorded. Uh, how about the high oxalate content in potato? I don't worry about that. I mean, uh, 
you know, you want to vary the different types of fruits and vegetables and grains you eat. But if you, uh, I wish I could find this video immediately with Dr. Joel Kahn about things like lectins and oxalates. I'm, I don't, that's not something we, we necessarily worry about, but you can always eat different vegetables, eat a variety. Must you eat potatoes and rice every day? No. Um, hubby loves butter on those starches. Are toppings allowed? Well, toppings are certainly allowed, but the toppings that I would put on the starch, whether it's rice or potatoes or things like beans, you know, and corn, because butter is basically pure fat, margarine, oil, cheese. So those things won't help your uh, waistline at all. But yeah, think of other toppings. Like we'll do potato meal bars, like even for company where we'll roast or bake a whole bunch of potatoes and sweet potatoes and have things like sauteed onions that were sauteed without uh, oil with mushrooms and cilantro and corn. And for the people that can have it like guacamole or the people that don't want the high fat guacamole made out of peas and salsa and we'll make these stuffed potato meals. Those are fantastic. My husband eats a lot of dairy ice cream and cheese as well as meat. I've been whole food plant-based for a year and mostly successful, but I get tempted and give in. Will this be addressed? Yes, it will be addressed. It'll be addressed a lot in the forum because you're not unique in that most people don't necessarily have spouses and children that are on board. When are we closing registration? Even though the program starts April 1st, I would imagine, Toby, we would have to close it by the 31st because it starts that Monday early in the morning. But as Toby said, the sooner you join, you get access immediately to the forum so you can start meeting your friends in, in, in advance. A hummus with veggies is fine, Debbie. You just want the hummus made without oil and tahini if you're trying to facilitate weight loss. Um, can a friend join this? Yes. So um, what I would recommend, Patty, is you'll if you registered, you'll get a replay and then maybe the friend will watch the replay and then or the friend could register without watching the replay. What's your take on weight loss shakes like SlimFast and Herbalife? Oh, my God. Dr. Lyle has a great video about how scammy they are because it, it, basically they're reducing calories. So anytime you reduce calories and reduce sodium because they they have no sodium, you'll lose weight. So yeah, they work. But re remember, what you do to w lose weight, you better be willing to do forever or the weight will come back. So if you want to stay on Slim Fast and Herbalife or, or Zempic, that's fine because you have to do it forever. I would much rather stuff my pie hole with potatoes and rice <laughs> and all the things that I get to eat and stay slim. So, yep. Um, okay. I'm not sure, Rita, if you're eating enough. Like, you know, these are the things I'd have to kind of see your food diary. Yeah, oils as moisturizers are not going to affect weight loss. However, Dr. McDougal tells a story about a patient that... Um, that had to be tube fed and you can't, I guess, put oil in the tube and they were able to just put oil on the patient's skin and the patient was able to absorb enough of it to, to not be fatty deficient. I forget what video, but, but yes, I mean, I do, I don't use oil on my entire body, but I do use a little bit of moisturizer on my, I mean, does it have oil in it? I don't know. I, I haven't looked, but I can get back to you on that. Um, I'm continuing to gain weight through perimenopause. Will this help? Well, um, I don't know about Susanna's journey, but I was definitely perimenopausal. I, you know, I'm not sure which is peri and post when I lost all my weight at the age of 52. And Susanna, you were about 50. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, when I started, I was perimenopausal and, um, and having a lot of trouble with uh, estrogen dominance and that kind of thing. And um, actually ended up having a uterine ablation, which helped me a lot. Um, and you know, I feel like I've kind of unlocked the keys to the kingdom by finding this way of eating. And I, I did not, I lost all my weight during perimenopause and postmenopause, all of it. Nice. All right. Uh, do we get any printed material as Cecilia? And there's, and there's a charge for them. No, you, you don't like, like we don't mail them to you, but you can print everything out, you know? Nice. Um, I love fruit. I can eat too much or will it cause me to lose slower? You talk about fruit for a minute, Susanna. I love fruit too. <laughs> um, and so for me, eating fruit was way less calorically dense than the other garbage I was eating. And so it's not something I've had to limit at all. 
And that's, that's a beautiful thing for me. I, I can eat a half a pineapple myself. No problem. Yeah. I mean, Dr. McDougall talks about how sometimes in some cases it can raise people's triglyceride, but think about it when you, when you get, start getting the modules and you learn more about calorie density, fruit is like 200 calories a pound. And I mean, honestly, look at nature. Do you ever see a, have you ever seen a, a heavy person walking around eating an apple? It doesn't happen. The thing about fruit is it's, it, it's mostly water, just like vegetables, nutrients, fiber. And if you're eating whole fruit versus dried fruit or fruit juice. And also there are things that we think of as culinary vegetables, zucchini, eggplant, tomato, bell pepper, okra, and cucumber. These are fruits. These are fruits, but they're savory. I mean, these are 67 calories per pound. So it's, it is hard for most people to eat too much fruit. I've eaten an entire watermelon, not in one sitting in one day. So fruit is mostly water. The thing is, is if you're somebody struggling with food addiction, we want you to not limit fruit, but we want you to maximize vegetables because fruit is still something very sweet, which is so much better to get your sweetness from fruit, but you need to kind of learn to like savory foods too. And it's funny because like I told you the story about last night, at my birthday party, there were all these desserts. I just I just want savory food now. I was a person, you know, it's funny because I told you asked me what we drink, pot, liquor, and water. Well, if you had asked me this uh, before J July 1st, 2003, it would be Coke Slurpee and Dr. Pepper. And the thing is, is all I did was eat sugar. Well, sugar and fat, you know, and it wasn't a big salt person. But now, like if, like if somebody says, what do you want? Like, let's say I eat and I'm still a little bit hungry. I would rather eat chips and salsa, like my healthy version, of course, than, than eat dessert anymore. So, and I think because I trained myself just to eat vegetables at the start of every meal. So they're really important for cravings and things like that. All right. Um, as long as I'm satiated, can I just eat a 50-50 plate? I think so. And uh, can fruit be eaten alone as a snack? You know, it can. One of the things that um, we a lot of people find useful if they don't enjoy eating greens or salad is to put fruit in them. So we have a lot of people that like, you know, when they were learning to eat cooked greens like kale, they would actually put a little bit of mango or pineapple and maybe cinnamon on it uh, to, to, to enjoy it more. Or even, I love this. Last night, the person that brought salad, she had kiwi in the salad. She had cherries. She had grapes. So using that, but there's nothing wrong with eating fruit. It's just that I want people to if possible, if they're really struggling with sugar addiction, start their day in a savory way and keep fruit as the, as the sweet treat for the end of the day. What about after the 21 days? How long can you go back and research? Oh, oh you'll own it for life, Patricia. So as long as you download what's downloadable, which, which I think everything is, uh, you'll be able to access it forever. You know, it's yours. I've been eating emotionally nonstop. What is the best way to jumpstart to break this cycle? Hmm. I, I mean... What do you think, Susanna? You know, I, I, I really believe what Dr. Lyle has said about this, that everyone has emotional stuff, and but it still depends on your environment. And so, you know, even uh, back in ancient times, you know, when there wasn't much obesity, there were still people were still mean to each other. People went through difficult things. And how come there wasn't obesity is because of the environment. And so that for me, that has been the key is to get, get the environment cleaned up because I do eat emotionally. I still go through lots of stuff with my family, difficult times. And, you know, we've been dealing with a lot with my dad being sick right now with, with uh, prostate cancer. And it's, it's still, I'm still eating, but I'm eating food that is not harming me when I'm dealing with emotional stuff. Yeah. Okay. Susanna, I, you guys, I'm so sorry. I did my best to get to as many questions as I could, but Toby, who's our webmaster, it is much later in Germany and he has a toddler. So Susanna, I do want to ask you one more question. And if you didn't get your question answered, I am live every day on YouTube, put it in the chat. I'll answer it or come to the program. We'll answer it. So Susanna, just so people that are on the fence about registering, why did taking this program, do you think a step-by-step -step program really helped you? Uh, because I was like a toddler. <laughs> I needed, I needed 
moment by moment help and support. And so getting those daily modules, um, daily, you know, daily emails in small enough portions that I could read them, uh, do watch the video, do the little bit of homework, think about things throughout the day, get your closing email at night. And then, you know, I would keep notes uh, through the week of um, things I wanted to ask in the live sessions. And, you know, having that forum, I mean, I, you know, that's the beauty of a forum is you're not interrupting someone. If you're in a different time zone, you can write your questions in and comment on other people's experiences. It's sort of a, I, I just really love that. It's such a well-rounded program, kind of kind of hits all the markers for me. Great. Well, thank you. And people are saying, well, if I did another program or no, you, you, this is every program is different. You have to register. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for those that have stuck with us. Or I appreciate your time. I hope you learned something. And thank you, Susanna, for your your, uh, you know, just for helping with this, because I think you're an inspiration. You've been a tremendous success story. And now you're going on to pay it forward and help other people. So we look forward to seeing those of you that have registered and have a wonderful Easter holiday. Don't go off plan too much because it's going to be even harder the next day for those of you that are joining us on April 1st. And thank you, Toby, for setting up all the technology. We can't do it without you. Sorry, Toby, that we kept you a little longer, but we're just passionate about helping people with these questions. If you join the program, uh, I'll be able to run the tech. So if Toby is late in Germany, we can go as long as he wants. So thanks, everyone. And I really do believe that no matter how long or deeply you suffered, like Susanna, you can have the health and the body you deserve and desire regardless of your age. So thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Susanna. Thank you.